The Emperor has been expecting you. Hi everyone and welcome to One Six Figure Focus. And you're very welcome to episode number 40. Episode number 40 of The Hope Show. A uh, weekly live stream dedicated to one six scale collecting, collecting in general, movies, TV, television, pop culture, all of that type of stuff. Kitty Murphy got it done. I'm just saying. There's, there are those people out there that say that Christopher Nolan is overrated and Christopher Nolan fans are insufferable, but Killian Murphy got it done. Nolan has an Oscar and you're all entitled to your opinion, but some opinions are just simply wrong, folks. Ian, how are you doing? Hey, all good. Jose, we got Eddie Money Mendez and we have got Trevor. I, I, I had to in, indulge. I had to. Come on. The boy from Cork got it done. The boy from Cork <laughs> got it done. Boy from Cork. Yes, he did. He did. I'm so happy for him, man. It was, it was, you know, great movie and oh, a yeah. great performance. And um, if you thought I was insufferable beforehand, I got a shout out, Mark Attack. If you're in the chat, this is not the stream for you. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to get started. Um, uh, thanks very much for being here, folks. Uh, anyone have any little anecdotes or stories they want to kick off the stream with? We got a little Keaton Batman too last night too. That was a nice little, uh, nice little. Uh, I didn't even uh, watch it, man. I didn't. Oh, even you didn't watch see it. it? No, it's it's got it on. It was on City O'Clock, so I've got it like recorded. And I'm gonna watch it when I can proper sit down and watch. So they had it. Schwarzenegger so, and Devito uh, present an award, and I did uh, see as that, the too. twins, and then of course bringing up the fact that they were both Batman villains and. Uh, said something i won't spoil it but they pointed to uh, keaton in the audience and he just gave a great batman face uh for a few seconds it was really good <laughs> did, he, did he get nuts did he say that's getting nuts he no, no he, he kept kind of, kind of smooth but he he gave him a little eye you know an eyebrow oh, good stuff. raise good it was stuff. good good stuff excellent all right um all right so look we'll we'll get straight into it folks we'll um Right, so we're at 3,097 subscribers. If you're one of those people, thank you very much. If you're watching now and you're getting any sort of value or entertainment Thanks. from the stream, please consider uh, uh, hitting the subscribe button. Shout out to the gifties. Taylor Swift says, uh, Swifties. One Six Figure Focus says gifties because uh, I know the, the community has been very generous lately, gifting random memberships to people. So we got TX Boy 2010, Darth Tamaris, Your Majesty 3, Jerber Man Cave, Single Song, Whether the Movie Canon, Akira, Just a Nerd, Uncard Reviews, Christian Detour Collections, Aaron Car Sin, Zef 76, Ricky P, Blazin, Bla Blazin Asian? Very hard to say. Uh, Matthew Apollo, Toy Mafia, Low Key Collector, Bubastis, 123, Mike Vela, Aaron Collects. Then we have the Troopers, the non gifty troopers. We got Danny Spotchka, H and Silver Fox. Sorry, H and Silver Fox. That isn't even a hard one to say. <laughs> um, who is channel member and panel member, and also same as Jose G. Hernandez, Brian Wong, The Ben Thomas Show, Eddie Money Mendez, channel member and panel member, Caffeinated Comic Fan, Jim Collector, Lancelot's Nerd Corner, Mugwump, Michael, who can't join us today, but he's usually a panel member as well. And Chudy from Texas and Ryan Smith, the Batman fan from the UK. Of course, uh, got to give a shout out to the commanders as well, the top tier of the um, channel memberships who have their YouTube channel name displayed at the end of all the content like this. Usually we go to the new videos, but these are more upcoming videos. So uh, I've got the thumbnails done, the videos recorded, just have to edit and post. A bit late to the game on, well, sorry, this is actually live. Tips I wish I knew when I started as opposed to now, so I wouldn't have made uh, some uh, missteps or mistakes. This is upcoming, I'm a bit late to the uh, party on this, but I have it recorded, just have to post it. Same as Shin and my thoughts on Modib, you're going to get some of them uh, today. So I will address the chat, but before we address the chat, I think we should... We we should let Trevor pick, All right? We're gonna we're gonna do we'll do one topic first, and then we will then we'll say hello to everyone in the chat. So, uh, okay. Um, By the way, the top right, that's Jose. Mm. Just saying, just saying. Oh, I don't know if I want to go down that road. Uh, I watched that last week. That was <laughs> do it. scary. Do it. Oh, right, you know what? I'll get shot. I'll jump in. Let's go. Let's jump in. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Meanwhile, Jose walks into the Hope Show. Is 
than no one else. <laughs> All right, so yeah, he's pretty confident. He's pretty confident. See, give him I knew some no. answers last week. I did pretty well, but this week I'm sure it'll be completely different. So it's uh, welcome to face the facts checker against our <laughs> resident uh, facts checker Jose G Hernandez. I'm going to ask each uh, participant, the challenger, and of course uh, Trevor, a quest three questions. It'll be what year was a certain movie uh, released? Who directed a different movie? And then who played they each get different questions people in the chat don't type the answers into the chat but just to be sure i'm going to ask trevor and jose to click onto the private uh chat so you can't see any potential spoilers so Done. please select the private chat now okay so pressure's on right we're going to ask uh the the uh we're going to ask the challenger the first question Trevor, in what year was the movie Fight Club released? God. I'm going to say 98. It's 1999. He was off oh! by one. So he's hit the post. <laughs> Jose, in what year was the movie Alien released? Yeah, I believe that's 79. It is 79. This Jeez. guy living up to his name, right? So we're going to go back to the challenger, Trevor. I need to make sure I ask this question correctly. I need this is really important. So uh, this is a uh, so I need to make sure I have this pronunciation right. That's not a particularly hard thing to pronounce. I want to make sure I have it right. So I'm going to ask you it's the next help. one is who, who directed? <laughs> who directed? Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Who directed the movie Ex Machina? Oh, God. That was, uh, um, oh, oh, uh, Gareth Edwards. You, no, I was going to say you're close, but you're not. Um, it was Alex Garland. Alex Garland. Oh. So, huh. this I is a chance, this is a chance to win. This is a chance to win, Jose. I do think this question is a bit easier, though. I'm going to go with it anyway. I had it written down. Who directed Spaceballs? Oh, uh, shit. Uh, this one. Uh, uh, you're going to get me on this one. I haven't seen Spaceballs. Okay. So. Can I steal? Okay. I'll, take, I'll take the L. You, you, you cannot steal. There, Damn we got, we got, you, But now is a chance. Now it's... So he, he's 1-0, we're going into the final round. And uh, this is a chance, you could, you could level if you get this right and he gets it wrong, you, you could level. So um, I just want to make sure again. So I'm going to name, this is going to be like, who played? Okay, who played? So in the movie Aliens, Trevor, God. who Aliens played are. Hudson? In Aliens. Aliens. Who played Hudson? I'm so bad with these characters. Low-key uh, collector. <laughs> I, uh, I, I don't remember. That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Bill Paxton, rest in peace. Oh, Bill Paxton. Game Jesus. over, man. So, Jose, we're going to give you a chance. You have won. You're 1-0 up. But let's see I if you that. can... Uh, you can live up to your your, your name and uh, this this uh we'll see if we can uh so who played i want to make sure i have this right i had them written down but i had them written on my phone i'm using my phone for streaming didn't see that coming uh one second who played the character let me get this right again i'm not actually going to tell you the name of the movie though here's the thing i to make it difficult for you. Who played the character James Graham, otherwise known as Jim or Jamie? That's difficult, but I can't tell you the, the name of the movie. You will get it then. So the character's name is James Graham, but sometimes referred to in the movie as Jim or Jamie. Oh, man. Any thoughts, Jose? 
Okay, so you've still. I think you're gonna stop me. Yeah, no. It if you told me uh, the movie, I might get it. But <laughs> anyone else in the panel know? No. Nope. The movie was Empire of the Sun. Oh man. <laughs> and the actor no. was. Christian Bale that. was one of his Christian first. Uh, oh, first yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little kid. Yeah I, yeah, I thought you would have known if I had said Empire of the Sun because it's kind of one of his first roles and he's he's very mm. young. I'm telling you, like, this man here is, is you know, he, he, he's uh, started off strong, but he's living up to his name. Oh, is there no one else? I had a chance. If uh, I had had the Mel yeah, Brooks he, question, I would have had it. And Mel Brooks, yeah, that's space balls, right? Up, could have pulled up Bill yeah. Patton. I don't know why I couldn't pull yeah. pull that up, but I don't know. I would have got that one. But. Yeah. That's it's all. It's it's easy when you're sitting at home, folks. I'm telling you. So uh, yeah. look, we're, we're gonna address the, the chat before we, uh, <laughs> before we get started. So uh, I think we have people in the chat who uh, are maybe maybe they're writing the answers after they already, uh, we already got the answers. Let me see. Um, so we have shout out to Noble Young. We got Brad Kosky who uh, pre-ordered Paul. I'd say there's people in the chat, the panel who have pre-ordered Paul Atreides as well. Dave's Man Cave Ireland. Of course, we have panel member and channel member H and Silver Fox. We have X Man Supreme. Uh, live in 60 seconds. <laughs> Where's uh, Nick Cage? Yeah, he's probably chasing that Mustang. We got Mike Fela. Thanks very much for being here. We got Mark Mitchell, another channel member. Thank you. What else we got? Uh, we got 16 Rick. We got Bart. We got S Beam. Thanks very much for being here, uh, Stefan. Good to see you. Uh, who else we got? All right, we got Shane with the good shirt. <laughs> yeah, I wear. I have four of them. I just wear them on rotations. Like <laughs> Austin panel. Austin panel. Austin. Oh, I misread that. Um, Austin Nicholas is here. Uh, hey panel and chat. I kind of like read half his name and half of the uh, the, the, the comment. So we got SG Collectibles. Thanks very much for being here. I like the way Austin can spell Ian's name correctly. He can. Open Friends mm -hmm. and Brage, and I still can't do it. Um, <laughs> Tyria is here. Great stuff. Yep, Mel Brooks, absolutely right. Uh, what else we got? Danny Spotska and Jose would be fun to match up. Yeah. Yeah. Got, well, mm. we can't we can't do that until someone. Uh, dethrones our resident fact checker and he's two for two now <laughs> folks he's two for two all right so look we've addressed the chat thanks very much if you're watching live or you're watching a replay and as usual pinned into the chat is the link to channel membership so right let's let's see what's next and um I, jose you're gonna have to pick next because uh okay as soon as you you're you're the reigning champ at the moment <laughs> all right what you want to talk about Uh, I think it'd be fun to hear about your uh, Comic-Con uh, experience. So we'll go with that one. Cool. So we will get through to that so far. Now, where do I have these things? I think it's actually the next slide. All right. So Dublin Comic-Con happens actually twice a year. Um, I have This is my second one that I went to. It happens as a spring one. There's an August one. Um, I went to the August one last year because of they had Linda Hamilton, Robert Patrick, and... Um, Michael Bean, I just thought that was amazing the way they had three of those, you know, actors from Terminator 1, 2, and, and uh, Aliens there. So I went and met them, got autographs and all this. This one I was there, part of the 501st. So there was a lot of 501st there. So on the left, you might have seen someone, a collector called uh, Keith the Six Scale Padawan or Keith Dublin's Devil. Um, he would be uh, in a lot of the chats. He's a Six Scale collector and he's also a 501st member. That's him, the Scout Trooper on the left. And uh, they had this set, um, one of the kind of comic, comic shops, um, uh, I believe, had this uh, set, which had Han Solo and Carbonite. So that's me on the right then. And so we've kind of stood there for ages. This short trooper was amazing. This looked like it walked right out the set. I was so impressed. Uh, another guy called Todd from the Fiber First, really impressive. Um, and then the CEO, a guy called Richard, is Django Fett there. Again, I'd never seen Django Fett live or... Uh, the Shore Trooper, so impressive. Literally, they look like they walk right off the movie set. Uh, very impressive. Um, this is the weirdest thing ever, but um, in the dressing room, this guy comes in and he's opening up this big box full of like, you know, I, I, I saw it straight. I, see, I saw the belt and I was like, that's a DX-19. And he's like, 
what the hell's a DX19? I had to explain to him. That's what we call the latest. You know, I, was, I was talking. He knew what Hot Toys were and Six Scale and stuff. And I was explaining, like, that's my favorite suit. We call that the DX19 because that's the latest version of it. And I was telling him about it. And he, um, I was about to go get, get food with a, with, um, uh, Keith, the guy in the the, 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 the scout trooper armor and uh, his friend Mark and um, he goes come here you don't have a minute or maybe five and I was like why he goes I, I kind of this is actually really heavy and it's really hard to put on how often do you get a chance to dress Batman I mean come on so was it a little weird yes but did I did I get to see all the suit and stuff like that and uh, you know the, the weight of it it is like it's a it's actually more rubberized than anything really really heavy um, really expensive, like the, the actual rubber pads itself. One, you're Alfred. I am Alfred. I know. I, I was like the guy Alfred. in the chair. Yeah, I, I, that, <laughs> I was, I'm a, I was a, a young Alfred, but I'll take it. I'll take it. You know. But uh, um, this was so impressive. The uh, the suit itself, the the belt, the cape, and everything. And um, he was saying that I met him the next day, and he was like, "Hey, you got the you got the back of the cape really well because no one can do that. You had it like the way it's like a V." And I was like, "Yeah, that's because the figure is the exact same way." So I was. He was like, you know, this needs to go under this. I was like, please, I got this. But um, <laughs> really, really impressive uh, suit. He just uh, he just looked the business. But um, yeah, um, this this cost like this dude again looked like he walked off the set of uh, Return of the Jedi or something like that. Um, so impressive. I'd never seen the the Boba Fett like this uh, up close and personal. Um, Irish guy, obviously, they're all the five first the Irish Legion. Most of them are Irish. There are some people from different countries there as well. But he, um, this thing is like, like three and a half grand, like all in, insane. But just literally looked like a movie set. It was buzzing. Um, just walked into the lift and they were there. I don't know. I hadn't seen them all day, but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, insane. A really, really good. There was so much Five of First presence. Some of the cosplays were just again. It's insulting to call them cosplays. Were literally armorized. Um, I'd have to say this. It's hard to it's hard to uh, hard to walk single file into uh, an, an escalator, an elevator <laughs> like. That. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, just random. Just this guy was literally crossing the street outside. He was walking along, saying goodbye to his friends. He was going to walk home like this. He must live in the city center, but um. This was so impressive. Uh, mm. One of the five of first members, Aiden, he um, he three D printed all this, three D printed all the parts, put it all together, uh, you know, sanded it, weathered it, uh, painted it up, uh, installed all the lights and the circuitry, coded it, all the circuit boards inside, remote controlled. The thing, literally like it's on a set, drives around the place, spin the head spins, uh, makes all the sounds. Um, I, he was trying to explain to me, oh, it's actually quite easy once you. You know, you you get you know people will help you, and I was like, yeah, you're an, you're an engineer, aren't you? He goes, well, well, yeah, that helps. <laughs> he actually was an engineer, mm. but it was yeah, it was really really cool. So yeah, um, yeah, I didn't really do any of the autographs or anything like that. Uh, there was no one there that they had a few guys who did the voices from GTA and stuff like that, but it just really wouldn't be my thing. They had um one of the guys who actually does the voices for GTA plays a character in The Walking Dead, the handlebar mustache guy, kind of balding. I can't remember his name, but it's just um, yeah, a lot of people were hyped for it, but it just uh, wasn't my thing. Um, yeah, so that was the experience. A lot of trooping, a lot of uh, meeting kind of people in very very impressive uh, armors, and um, yeah, really really good bunch of people. The five first and the, the people meeting them then, it's just, yeah, it's really good. Watching watching kids interact with R two was probably like the most heartwarming you, you, thing you'll ever see. Like really really cool. So um, yeah, really really good time. So uh, yeah, that was that was Dublin Comic Con Spring Edition 2024. So thanks for asking. Awesome. So uh, Eddie, haven't heard from you in a while. Do you want to choose? <clears throat> um, I'll go. I'll go for the snap. So. Straight for the snap, man. Straight for the snap. Yeah. Okay. Straight for the snap. Okay, where did I put it? All right, here we go. All right. Okay, if you just joined us, folks, you know the drill. You've got to put two things head to head, and you got to snap away one of them to dust uh, into oblivion. All right. So what you're getting rid of here is the character Negan from the from the TV show The Walking Dead, or the character Gustavo Fring from the TV show The Walking Dead. It's not the it, the character doesn't exist. So the show still exists, but it will change the course of the show. However, they uh, 
would would deal with it. But Negan didn't exist. The show still exists, and or Gustavo Fring wouldn't exist. Um, but Breaking Bad would still exist. They'd have to go in a different direction. It would completely up heave the show, the direction of the show. So, where do you picked? What do you think? I'm kind of torn on this one because I like Breaking Bad more as a show. Yep. But I like Negan more as a character. You see what I did? Yeah. I'm with you. Cause I'm with you. I'm with you. Which one would I be more upset with not existing in the world? And I think I'd be more upset if Negan didn't exist. So I might have to snap Gustavo, which is crazy. Okay. Gustavo's gone. What about yourself, uh, Jose? Uh, I think for me, it'd be kind of easy because I didn't really watch The Walking Dead other than a few couple episodes. I think I saw a little bit of the first season uh, and then a little bit like here and there as the seasons carried on. I knew about Negan and I watched a little bit about his big scene he had, but I, I wasn't I wasn't an avid Walking Dead watcher. So I think it'd be easy for me. I got to keep Gus. So I'd snap Negan. OK, so we got one for was that like uh, one for Gustavo Fring and one for Negan then? Yes, um, mm-hmm. Ian. Um, yeah, I'll I'll steal Lucille and hit Negan over the head. He's gone. <laughs> yeah, he he's an evil man. But my God, you love to hate him. Like Jeffrey Dean Morgan just plays the part so goddamn good. Mm. What do you think, Trevor? Yeah, I, I really like the way he played this part. Um, in and around this season and maybe early into the next se- through the next season uh and then they kind of nerfed the character which i i did not care for having read the comic books but uh i think they could have gotten away without him and i don't think that uh breaking bad would be the same about gus frang so it's got to be negan get snapped i'm with you i'm with you you might need to turn the gain down your mic a little bit, Trevor. Oh, yeah? I think you're coming in a bit loud. Maybe, maybe okay. I'm wrong. I know if maybe people. How about chat, now? Right, let me know. A little better. A little, little better. Is, um, is it a bit? Can, is it coming? Is he coming through loud for you, the panel members? Yeah. He's yeah. loud. Yeah. So maybe just dial it back a little bit. Thank Interesting. You. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I don't want to mess with Breaking Bad as much as Negan is. <clears throat> and much as Negan is. Um, just a really, really good bag. I think overall, the sum of all the parts, Breaking Bad is a much better show than Walking Dead. I don't want to mess with uh, anything um, Breaking Bad, but I just want to leave that the way it is. So uh, Negan's getting snapped. Um, over the summer, randomly bumped into uh, Giancarlo Esposito in Dublin buying a coffee. Um, yeah, he's just... Uh, I didn't really want to push too much for an autograph running. I just went, excuse me. And he said, yeah. And I was like, you're... John Carlo Esposito, yeah. He goes, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm a massive fan. And he goes, thanks very much. And I just walked away. Then I, I really wanted to get the autograph. I really wanted to get the, but just when he kind of looked at me, there was a bit of a pause when he before he turned and went, yes. I was like, okay, I'm not gonna push my luck here. And I know he yeah. doesn't like chemistry teachers anyway, so I'm gonna move on. <laughs> okay, number two. What you're snapping away here is the ability oh. to pre-order these things. Ooh. So, yeah, you like that, Eddie, don't you? How'd you like them apples? I'm going to go first. I chose this because this is a choice I wouldn't like to make because I have the both of them on pre-order. But I've got to snap away the four-pack because the 89 means so much better to me and I'm literally building my display around it at the moment. So uh, it's a horrible choice. There's a really high standard here. Hopefully, if they turn out as good as the prototypes, I'm talking about both the NR four-pack four and the 89 Batmobile, but the 89 Batmobile, that movie made me love movies so yeah I, i'd have to snap away the ability to pre-order the um the four pack joker what do you think guys how's audio now is it better it's actually kind of it's, it's less loud it's less loud yeah it's, it's, it's like a buzzing baby. yeah it's like a buzzing. i had this before i don't know what's going on it's actually sounds it reminds me of something i saw in a movie recently I don't know what it is. Yeah, uh, I'll come this, It's Dune the Suit. It's what? Dune the Suit. No, you put is one it? there. The oh, garden yeah. goes zzz. Yeah. All right. So it's basically what you're saying is that Trevor came in character to talk with Madib. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tr- try um, going back out and come back in again soon. Yeah. How about still, still then? No. 
Oh, oh that's bad. terrible yeah. now. I'm not going to lie, it's really bad now. It's really harsh. Go. Right, I'm going back. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. Man, that was actually, it was kind of like buzzy and loud, but um, uh, Trevor has gone. Uh, Ian. Well, I've only pre ordered the two pack, so that's gone. No way, ah, I'm no rid- way rid- man. Of- that's a cop out answer. Come on, you just <laughs> play the game. No, no, no. <laughs> Uh, is, is, hey. is that on me, guys? Is that on me, or can we? We're we gonna, we're we gonna accept that. I'd accept no, it. No, that's hey, that's on you. Okay, that's on you. Okay, no, next I'm, time, I'm, next I'm joking, time, I'm no. building the all three of them around, around <laughs> the ability to annoy you. Right, <laughs> all right. So, um, w- but if let's say you had ordered the the four pack, what would you choose? It? Yeah. Yeah, Joker's getting snapped all day long. As much as I want two pack, um. <laughs> 89 mobile batmobiles no that's that's never getting snapped all right okay jose uh, i got another loophole if we snap the jazzing batmobile we can still pre-order the hot toys version correct <laughs> yeah you can yeah that's fair yeah it's fair. oh there you go the snapping the yeah. jazzing batmobile and, okay all right okay yeah that's that's fair enough that's fair enough and eddie uh, I'd have to snap the Batmobile. I'm in my current display space. I couldn't do a vehicle anyway, so and I have the I have the four pack on order. But and I also think just these are pretty similar similarly priced, right? So yeah, I think fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred, the four delivery and whatever tax you have to pay. I think the base prices are similar. Ballpark. Yeah, I, th- I think the value is better on the four pack. So. Oh, interesting. What about you, Trevor? How's the sound? It's. I'm not gonna lie. I feel like I'm being rude to you, but it, it actually is fairly buzzy. I don't know what it's. Don't it's, know. it's like going lower on? there. Wait, wait. Speak again there. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, it's um, it's it's a bit distorted for some reason. Um, oh, I'm not no. sure what it is. Worse, but um, better. How about now? It's not as loud. I can use. It's, hang on a second. Let me try this. Yeah, it's not as loud, but it's like a really digitally sounding, like kind of fuzzy. Um, How's that? Yeah, that sounds better. Say so, yeah, it's it's yeah. it's it's definitely okay. clearer and lower. We'll see. Yeah, I see, I see. So something, maybe right. something up with your mic, no? Maybe. Because uh, um, la- last last week we started and um. My, my lights started flicking on and off and I was thinking, I oh that. no. And I had to go and I was hoping the best case scenario that the, US, the USB hub I was using has just kicked the bucket and thankfully that's what it was. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I got lucky, but um, yeah, it bothered me from the whole show. Sorry, Trevor, go on. <laughs> that's okay. Uh, I think I'd have to, being that I have three Batmobiles, Right now, I do not have this one, but I think I could get it. So, this is it. You can either get one or the other, is what you're saying. Um, yeah, you snap away one of them, so it never sorry. never existed, never was put up for pre-order. You know what? I, I have two customs of the Joaquin Joker right now, so as much as I want them, as much as I'm looking forward to them, I probably have to take my chances and snap those, and just in case I want this 89 Batmobile, because I, yeah. I probably will at some day, at some point. And who knows? Maybe they do... A Joker two version with Harley Quinn. Who knows? Sure. Who knows? Right. In seven to twelve years time. Okay. <laughs> so you know, if we all like cut back in red meat and um, you know watch our sugar intake and salt intake, we we, <laughs> we could make it that far. Um, yeah. But um, yeah. So that's pretty. Yeah. My I would yeah slap slap away the, the four four pack. Okay. So this one was inspired by. Do you want to explain this, uh, Jose? Because uh, I think that this could be really misinterpreted. I'm not, and I'm kind of distancing myself from it. So you, you, you explain it to people what we're actually doing here. Uh, well, without getting too much into the movie, there's a choice made, and that's that's it. Do you do you stick with with your initial choice, or do you go with the political choice? So that's that's kind of how I was uh, framing it here. Uh, but you could also pick, I mean, if you haven't seen the ending of the movie or you don't know the movie very well, you could, you could always pick uh, who, which actress you prefer uh, moving forward with the franchise. of the. So I think that'd be a, a way to frame it without getting into the spoilers of the movie. Hmm. Okay, so 
who wants to go first? I'll go first because okay. I don't care for Zendaya at all. I like in anything she's done. To be fair, everybody keeps telling me to watch. What's Euphoria? the show? Yeah, Euphoria. Yeah, yeah. yeah I haven't Calvin watched it. Her, she's Margo fantastic. Keep telling me to watch that, and I haven't seen it yet. But mm. anything else I've seen her in, I don't care for her. You don't like um, her as uh, MJ, no? No, I no. Absolutely I really like not. how she portrayed the character. It was just different. I really liked it. Um, and I didn't care for her much in the first Dune either. So, and and if we're going with the subject of that Ian wants to or that Shane wants to not touch on, I'd still not pick Zendaya. So, I'm going uh, Florence Pugh all the way. Apparently, uh, an Irish guy called Paul Meshko, uh You'd know him. Um, Jose, you've seen yeah. normal people. Yeah. Normal things. Mm-hmm. He, he's been, uh, he's normal been linked. Yeah, he's been linked romantically to um, Florence, Florence Pugh. Pugh. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how true that is, but um, apparently it's pretty couple. true. I don't All know. Right. Okay, <laughs> good for him, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's he's a handsome man as well. So yeah, um, these young, good-looking, famous people, huh? So um, mm-hmm. what would I? You, you see, I don't want to spoil. Well, we can We did hold. We did spoilers last week really we did but i, I mm-hmm. don't, don't want to the choice he made politically um and not following his heart and all that kind of stuff like his whole thing was to get revenge wasn't it yes and mm, he kind of got that in a way but uh, he I don't know if if it's revenge he's he's after he should have just um had issues and finished um Christopher Walken to be honest but I don't know do, do you know what I'm saying yes but it's mm-hmm. now, now it doesn't seem like it's revenge he's after so if I'm being really cold and calculated he's got a bigger plan and I think he's mm-hmm. absolutely made the right choice I don't know how it's going to work out for him but um you know, it's it's you know it's probably all warm and fuzzy to go. No, he should follow his heart. But if 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 his motive depends on his motivation, if his motivation is to get more power, then I think he's he's made the right choice. So it'd be a snap 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 away and day then. I'm a horrible person. I'm going straight to hell. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna counter that because I do not think that's what he's he's doing. Mm. Um, mm it's uh it's it's more of a it's kind of like it's kind of like dr strange seeing it's like there was the he saw the possibilities and there's there was one possibility for the fremen to to really come out on top of this and uh at that point he may have taken it to a different step and said hey we're here let's make you know everything right i guess but uh without doing I- too much of a spoiler for future stories i think it's stick with zendaya I love the way, and you know, actually, his own. I believe his mum. I believe, uh, sorry, is it Duke, his father? Yeah, Leto. He, Leto he, yeah, Leto. He he never married, and therefore his it was a is his um his mother was what was his concubine? Would that be right? Like they, Lady Jessica. They, yeah, yeah. I don't think they're mm-hmm. married. So, and I don't think he married because he didn't want to, he'd see that he was to, to, to cheat on his, uh, on Lady Jessica. I, I, I was watching a breakdown, apparently that's what it was, they weren't actually married, I think it's mentioned in the book, I'm reading the book at the moment, but I haven't got that part, but, um, so maybe that's what, that's what um, Paul's motivation is, but uh, I love the way it's Game of Thrones in space. Space desert, so it's uh, it's it's complicated, but uh, it's, yeah. So who else wants to? Uh, Ian, do you want to weigh in this? Well, I would love the opportunity to snap both of them. Oh, <laughs> dude, it's a family show. <laughs> it's a family show. Come on, come on. So for me, I would. Um... Yeah, I'm, I'm going to snap Princess Irulan. You learned I'm the real names. Chani. Look at you, you nerd. <laughs> Chani. I'm, I'm keeping Chani. Okay. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you think like he's... Like, his the way he's kind of like, you know, he's telling her like, you know, 
you'll you'll you know you'll you know I love you till I die. Do you think he's actually genuine about that? And he's, but he's kind of like, oh, oh, by the way, I'm just doing this for for political power or whatever. Like deep down, yeah, that, I think that. And even mm-hmm. even if he he beds or whatever, don't know, don't care. I, I think it will come back round to Chani. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then if you consider the visions he has in part one. Uh, he does have a line where he says uh, Chani will come to understand and there's a, some scenes from the future at least you know how his visions are, can play out mm-hmm. how he sees them or they play out differently well there, mm-hmm. in some of his visions he sees himself with Chani so and the scenes that haven't happened yet so yeah but he also they change as well because some of what he saw changed looked like, his, mm-hmm. looked like his mother following he was following his mother and then somebody saw it looked like Chani so it's yeah it's all up in the air you know it's all up in the air it's all up in the air um all right uh thanks very much for for that uh jose (laughs) for sure (laughs) yeah just wanted us to recreate the decision so here we go who would you pick (laughs) yeah and uh right so we're gonna move on so we'll go back to back to the hub who hasn't who hasn't chosen yet Ian, did Ian choose? I don't think so. Uh, Ian? Right, okay, let's pick a figure. Let's go for Balin. Balin, okay. Balin it is. Okay. Balin. All right, so Baden Skull, one six scale figure from Ahsoka Disney Plus. Uh, yeah, you picked it. Do you want to have a chat about it? Yeah, yeah. For me, I did this. For me, this prototype head sculpt's absolutely astonishing. I, I just really love it. Um, they definitely know how to nail the older person. So, uh, I just think it looks it looks great, and. What we didn't really see on the show was the green tinge through the the fabric. Um, oh yeah, I just noticed that there now. Yeah, good catch. Yeah, and 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 then they've obviously put in the the kyber stone in the belt, but I didn't even see the stone on his ring mm. during the show. So that's brighter, and I think it really helps pop the figure. So mm. I really like it. And then I read somebody said that um, they were matching up that ring to Snope as well. So um, Snope's got a similar ring. Who? Snoke? Eh, Snoke, yeah, Your sorry. Um, um, Andy Serkis? This is like all, all roads lead to the sequels. Mm-hmm. Why would you yeah, sour the but... mood like that? <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> but <laughs> as the the figure would would have looked a little bit flat and dead, but I really like the the green tinge that's running through it when you see it. But it's the head sculpts a, a killer. I'm gonna go to Ian next because, or sorry, not Ian. So I'm gonna go to Trevor next to see what do you think? Because I know we disagree on head sculpts a lot of the time, Trevor. Like the Obi Wan, A New Hope. But I'm interested to see your your take on this because I'm hearing a lot of mixed opinions. Most of the overwhelmingly good. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I haven't done a deep dive on this because I'm just a little, I'm a little salty that we still haven't gotten anything from Andor, and we have 13 figures from Ahsoka, which was, mm. you know, um, but I, I think it's a good head sculpt. I think it looks really good in places, especially um, where he's looking kind of kind of sideways. Um, you know, a lot of it is the purse placement too. So, um, out of the two. Uh, the other one that we'll look at um, with uh, Shin. I think this is the better sculpt. Mm-hmm. I'd give it maybe a seven, seven and a half. Yeah, Whoa. Seven and a half. You, you, you'd give this a seven and a half? I so. Tough crowd. Jeez. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. I got to say, I, I'd be giving this a minimum of an eight and probably a nine. What, what don't you like about it? Um... I don't know. There's just something about the or in and around the eyes and the shape of the cheekbones that uh, I don't think quite matches up with mm. him. Uh, maybe it's an eight. Maybe it's an eight. Yeah. I gotta right say, there I on the uh, on the right looks really good. Is um, it like that he's is he wide around 
the eye area or something like is in like from here to here is that a bit wider than he should be or something yeah again i i just looking at it quick like a week that's ago that's great there um, yeah that looks pretty good there hmm. it's it's a good sculpt and they're both good sculpts um yeah maybe an eight he's a, he's absolutely jacked they've, they've got the the body proportions right from anyway he's a big guy yeah. like he's yep. imposing And it looks great with or without the cape or coat. Yeah, the body proportions are perfect. Mm. Um, so, like, uh, sorry, Ian, are, are you going to pick this up, Ian? Yeah, it's been pre-ordered already. Done, done deal. And, yeah, um, done deal. What about yourself, uh, Trevor? You're not sold on this? Cause... No, I, I, I've, uh, you know, had a discussion with myself and... Uh, I'm just not going to pick up stuff that uh, I just don't love the source for. And I like I love the Rebels as a cartoon. Um, I thought the cast, the casting was good. I just this show, unless they do something else with them, um, didn't do anything for me. So uh, I, I may even bypass the Rebels from this from this show. I may I may pick up Ahsoka just from the sculpt point of view, but uh, might, that might be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, Jose, I know you're you're more than likely in on this. Yeah, 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 uh, for sure. I kind of uh, the only thing I would probably add to the sculpt because I think it's a strong sculpt. I think uh, X Men Supreme was men uh, mentioning like a little bit of pepper, so a little bit more black. Um, you know, kind of a little bit of, in his gray and his beard, so it kind of it looks a little too fine there. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. It could be maybe the fixing the facial hair and maybe a little bit in the hair, kind of give it a little bit more of a natural look there. I think that might help the sculpt. Um, but if they if this is what we get, I think I think this is solid. Like you guys were mentioning eight, I think that's pretty that's a pretty good score for this one. It's definitely I feel is the stronger of the two. Uh, so yeah, I definitely I I love his look, the proportions, the Jedi medieval look that he has. A knight, you know, it just the, the and then the way that this hooded look looks uh, from that first opening scene, it, it just it looks great. I think those lightsaber should be a little bit more orange. I know this is all Photoshop, anyways, and it's not going to look like that, anyways. But I think it should be a little bit more orange. But other than that, yeah, uh, this is one uh, I definitely would want. I think that, when that, you see the photo of the unlit lightsaber, you can see it's clearly orange. If you see the the end four, you can oh, really okay. see it's it's orange. Mm. Yeah, so uh, it's not going to look like what he has there for multiple different reasons. So yeah, I get yourself yeah. CCFL, man. There we go. Yeah, I'm um, looking into them. Yeah, mm. so it's a rabbit hole, but I'm looking into them. Yeah, it's a rabbit hole. It definitely is. Uh, what do you think, Eddie? Um, I think the figure is sick. I think the likeness is pretty good. I I think it's really good. I do see some of the points that people make about the paint on the beard or his hair that it could be a little more detailed because um, the the facial hair looks soft. But I think the likeness is really good. Um, I yeah I think that it's awesome that people that wanted Balin that they finally made him um, I'm a little bit like Trevor in the way of like he was an interesting character I didn't care much for the show so I don't feel like I need this um, but he would it I don't know it I'm upset that I'm not gonna be able to see what happens with the character at least I don't think that we are because I think he was one of the better parts of Ahsoka um, but yeah I don't I don't need this I think they have to recast him. He yeah. didn't really do much. He came yeah. in and he looked cool, and what he did was was good. Was good. His his dialogue, he delivered it well. He was convincing. He looked the part. His action scenes were fantastic. He uh, himself and Shin, and when he when they came onto that, I know. It was I mean, he knocked out was. Ahsoka. He didn't do nothing. What do you mean? He just stood there, looked cool. He knocked out Ahsoka and sent her to the other world. <laughs> Yeah, so like that's one thing he did in like what eight or nine episodes. So like he didn't really he didn't have a major arc. Like he showed up, he was very mysterious. We like we like mysterious sits. Everyone likes mysterious sits. They kicked ass for a while in the ship, and then yeah, he had a really good fight with Ahsoka. His fighting style was unique, and yeah, he, fair enough, he knocked her over or whatever. Um, he fought her again uh, when they were on the other planet. 
Remember is at the end? Is that the Ninja Turtles planet or? Yeah, the Ninja Turtles planet. Yeah. He fought her again. Yeah, and then he kind of just stood in a rock and abandoned his uh, his Padawan yoke or whatever she called them. Yeah, or one. sit. He kind of, yeah. you know. I, I, I thought he really his, brought. I, go ahead, go ahead, Ian. His, his I thought arc, they wasted him a bit. Yeah, I think his bigger arc was yet to come. Mm -hmm. It was that slow burn building something. Mm -hmm. And like Trevor says, they'll 100% recast. Because that's got another part to play. Big part. Mm. But isn't that kind of like... You know, like early MCU, the movies were standalone good. But they were always tipping away, building towards something as well. Yeah? Like Mandalorian season one and two. Like, even though there was some like, you know, there was some like, I don't know find the MacGuffin kind of episodes or what, what you call them, side quests. They were still self-contained, entertaining episodes and they were always building towards that uh, finale with Luke Skywalker coming back and taking Grogu. But I just found this was a bit like, yeah, we're, we're setting we're setting things up for, for the next thing. Just, yeah, they either yeah. do. En you entertain us now. A, entertain us now and set them now. up. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So, so like, um, uh, look, uh, just... <laughs> I don't know what I found interesting After about his character go, is go on, is primarily on. because he uh, the way I was putting it uh, a few times to a few people I was telling them it's, it's kind of like a guy that he, he was really religious and he went to this church and then he found out that the church was corrupt and he left the church but he still kind of followed the religion he still you had just described belief. half of Ireland in my generation man yeah <laughs> but that's that's how he spoke though and like he still kind of practiced some of, yeah. the, of the beliefs you know the lightsabers the Padawan you know so like little things that he he technically Christmas. wasn't <laughs> Christmas so he technically you know still kind of in a way followed the Jedi way but he had in a way gone to the other side but not completely where you could call him a Sith so that's what I and everything everything he was talking about in terms of the the meaning and the purpose of of the universe I always found really compelling and I don't know if that was just the actor the gravitas and the presence that he brought to to the role but I found him the most probably one of the most compelling characters in the show and yeah as he, you know, he did a lot of talking and not a lot of doing. And as Ian was saying, perhaps they were setting him up for something bigger, which unfortunately we won't be able to see unless they recast. So. Mm -hmm. but, well, um, remember he said that it's all about a cycle. And ultimately, I think he's wanting to break that cycle. Whatever he yeah, sees is breaking too. it. So, yep. yeah. But you know, what I was going to point out trying to make is that, remember last week I was going through my, like, I still have it here. Um, one second. We were talking about Dune, and this is how I rate movies. A one star. It's, I don't know if you're rating a human being, you have a pulse, you're one star. Like, I mean, you're alive, congratulations. Like, and this, um, a movie, you've made a movie, fine. We're going to give you one star. That's your, like, your Thor, Love and Thunder. That's how I would rate, a, it's an awful movie. It's a movie, it exists, you get one star for making a movie, that's it. Two, it's okay, I'll never watch it again. Uh, life's too short. Three's a solid movie. Three's like a good movie. I may watch it again, but I, like I thought, I thought the creator was a three-star movie. It's not a bad movie, but I'll probably never watch it again. I also think Dune One is a three-star movie, but that's one that I will watch again. Do you know? I came out of Dune. I was like, it's a four-star minimum. Say this is what I said last week, but I was thinking about it all night, and I was thinking about it the next day, and I was looking forward. When am I going to see it again? And I want to see it in IMAX. And it, it, I started listening to the soundtrack. And I started thinking about the, the little sounds of the thumper. And the sounds that weird. You know that echo thing that they have at the start. When they, everything starts with a quote. It was like power over spice. Power over people. And then I was like actually this movie is staying with me. And then I went and watched it again in IMAX. And I was like okay this is not a four star movie. This is more than a four star movie. And like the more I, when I saw it again I enjoyed it even more. And now it's like not a four star. It probably is a five star. And like, who was it? Uh, I was in a group chat with uh, the, the, the Wolfpack uh, boys and, and, and Joao and a few. And I think it was like Steve and Dilo were saying it's a masterpiece. And I said, I don't think it's a masterpiece, guys. But the more I'm thinking about it and the more after watching the second time and I want to watch it again now, the more I'm thinking, I think we could be looking back at this movie in 10, 15, 20 years going, yeah, that's one of the standards. So... Absolutely. Like, and I was thinking about it so much. I had no interest in that Paul Atreides bloody figure. 
but the movie dragged me in. But with Ahsoka, I did not give it a second thought. And I know they're completely different things and you're not all going to... But that's what I want from uh, a movie or a TV show to draw me in and captivate me and make me pull the trigger. Like, I know they're different things, I get that, but uh, um, yeah, sorry, but yeah. Yeah, look, it was just different thoughts or whatever. So, I just think Filoni is a little too enamored with the Filoni verse in Ahsoka. You know what I mean? There's, there, there wasn't, uh, I didn't bother showing it to my wife because, and she likes these things. I, sh- I would have been, ex- you know, pausing and explaining every, you know, every 15 minutes about what this thing was. And even the end story for those guys where they showed the, this, the, um, the rock formations with the father. And, you know, like if you didn't watch, you know, two episodes of the Clone Wars, you know, 10 years ago or whatever the hell it was uh you, you wouldn't even understand what that meant you know what i mean so i don't know he, he's got to sometimes think about there's people watching this who haven't seen any of this other stuff and you still have to entertain them to some degree so this is um the guy in the scout trooper that i was showing you earlier on um this is he was previously the artist previously known as the six scale padawan he's a collector and he's 501st um you also on apology now i would like this take this opportunity to apologize to absolutely nobody and absolutely nobody nothing wrong with uh giving something a bit of chance and thinking about it more and making better decisions uh keith but keith just winds me up we had words today <laughs> it was uh yeah you can't say that only but um yeah so right who, does anyone have any closing thoughts on uh Balin? i i won't be getting it i will say though the Ahsoka line, amazing looking. You, I, I, I don't think you can, you can, like, just it take, just as in, objectively, they look amazing. Whether it's Chopper, Hera, Balin, Shin, Ahsoka the White, the Padawan Ahsoka, and I think there's more to come. I think they'll probably do a, it's a Hu Yang, and uh, it would not surprise me if they do like an Anakin. We showed there was like a tease of the Anakin there as the well. Fact- um, yeah, say again. The fact that um, every time someone is talking about figures from the show and they say Hu Yang before Ezra shows how much this show sucks. <laughs> <laughs> no one says Ezra. No one. And Ezra yeah. is because that Ezra, show. Because Ezra, I knew nothing about Ezra. And I was like, okay, this guy he had an opportunity to take a lightsaber or something like that. And he goes, don't worry, I got this. And I was like, oh, this is going to get serious. And he really looked like he was just kind of learning the force as he's going along. I don't know. If you're going to take, turn down a lightsaber of a weapon, I thought this guy is just going to like mess stuff up. So that part, I don't, that whole force pushing thing, I really didn't, didn't do it for me. But um, I guess my only counter, Eddie, is that Hugh Yang was in the series like from the get-go, right? And, Ezra, the search for That's him the, was the rest of the show, and we found him what the last second okay. second to last episode. But that yeah, but we is got why... Captain Phasma or whatever. What the hell's his name? Captain. Yeah. No, but that Echo, Captain. Oh, you oh, <laughs> Goldface. Captain Phasma's from the who did nothing. The, the, the Enoch. 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 Yeah. The whole premise of the show is that she's looking for Ezra. So the main characters of this show is supposed to be Ahsoka, Sabine, and Ezra. These are the main characters of the show. Everybody wants Balin, Sh- Shin, Hati, and Hu Yang. Like, they did not do a good job on this show at all. That's what I'm saying. Ezra should be a bigger thought in people's minds. Sabine and Ezra are the two most irritating characters in the Ahsoka TV show. Yeah. And then, like, when they did... When they did meet each other after like traveling around the galaxy it was just like oh what's up man yeah that that irritated <laughs> don't play so hard much. to get now you've literally if, searched for him <laughs> if i saw like, a human that, that that wasn't trying to kill me for after all those years and it, it wasn't a turtle person I, I don't care who you are i, I you know, and then again, if you, I, if you remember me. ahsoka's premise was uh, like ahsoka's mission was not to find ezra it was to stop thrawn from coming and preventing the war that's what Ahsoka's mission was, but that was c- counteracting with Sabine's uh, uh, goal, which was to bring back Ezra. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of the difference there. My point has never changed, Margo. You will appreciate more things in Ahsoka. Trevor just said it. You'll appreciate more things in Ahsoka if you watch Rebels and Clone Wars. Because there's, without it, it's I like watched Clone Wars. Said, without it, there's no. <laughs> 
I'm a real fan now. <laughs> There's no like little bits of nostalgia, you know. Yeah, sorry, you're just making jokes because I know the the term casual gets thrown around a bit. Like you know, if you haven't seen every single little bit, but even of Star casual, Wars, you know, yeah, casual. Even knowing yeah. Rebels, even having watched Rebels, I don't think I, I think the cast looked good. I don't think their dialogue was good, but I don't think they, they even... I, I can't see Sabine acting like that after all these years and everything she's been through and everything she went through in the in the show. I mean, it was just... So you, would, you, you don't think that someone that's lost everything would be selfish and try to keep the one person that still she considers family not, and would want to do that? Not the sacrifice of all, all else to get to a person that she hasn't seen in, in several years. No, I mean, I don't think that character would have done that. That's That's my take on it. I don't buy it. We could talk about this for a long time. This um, X Men Supreme Boba Fett did nothing. That's not true. That's not true. He basically mm. tracked uh, the Millennium Falcon and was instrumental in catching Han Solo and Carbonate. That was mm-hmm. pretty much the cliffhanger that left us with yeah. um, in Empire Strikes and Back and, cool. and made oh, he looks and he had yeah. the slave one is just I mean, amazing, he but. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but he did do something. A lot of people do like Enoch. I, I think he's creepy as. I, although I like the voice. Dublin's Devil, Keith says, As time passes, Ahsoka gets worse in my mind. Very poor Star Wars content. You're just toxic, Keith. Um, you're not allowed not like someone, haven't you heard? Um, so, I consider myself a Star Wars fan, on, a casual Star Wars fan only because I've never read... Uh, yeah, I am... Um, I look I'm the same like even though I love the original trilogy I loved Rogue One I loved Mandalorian season one and two I loved Andor I'm a member of the 501st uh, and I collect uh, you know six scale figures which are far more expensive um even with that being said I have never wrote a Star Wars novel so therefore I'm casual that that's how it works <laughs> that's how it works um yeah a blind a blind Han Solo accidentally knocked him into this. Look, man, that was that was environmental, right? <laughs> yeah, his death, like he died too easily. Like that's a fact. That's a fact. But like, look at look at Darth Maul. <clears throat> like, he didn't really die easily. Obi Wan had to work for that. But they kind of did kill off really cool characters very quickly. And would not be fair to say. <clears throat> um. All right. So we go back. Who wants to? Select the next or anyone select. <clears throat> Did Trevor pick? I Trevor, picked, you yeah. go yet? <laughs> Remember, we went oh, head picked. to head. Oh, oh that's right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I thought that was you know last what? week. I, get, I need to learn into each other. Go I on. need a break from this, so I'm not going to pick Shin. I'm going to go with something <laughs> positive and go with uh, Buadib. Yeah, yes. Uh, look at him there. The little kangaroo mouse. Where is he? All right, so we'll just, uh, I got to say, I, I did not think. Okay, here's a question. To people in the chat, be honest, people in the chat who had no interest in this figure, who now have either pre-ordered it or are interested, I'm going to put my hand in the air and say I had no interest in this until I saw the second movie. And yeah, I'm in on it. It's, I just think that this is going to be perfect on the movie icons display because the word iconic gets thrown around a lot, but I think for something to be iconic, it has to A, be of a high standard and B, stand the test of time. So if something happens today, it might be amazing, but it's not necessarily iconic. But I think when you keep revisiting something year after year, it becomes iconic because it, like a, like a, like the base of a pillar, an usul. You see what I did there? So honestly, did anyone here have no interest in this and now they're like yeah i'm all in that second movie is just really good and i i'm hands in the air yep 100 I'm, I'm, I'm guilty me. yeah, yeah me, the second me. movie mm-hmm. yeah i'm interested to see when eddie watches it and comes back and goes you guys are all out of your minds this film sucked <laughs> i'm kind of hoping he doesn't like it to make it interesting um, i doubt that'll happen because I, I was trying to convince people that the first one was good when it came oh, out. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it is good. Um, because a lot of people oh, yeah. didn't love the first one. You know, it was. No, I didn't love and, the first one. Yeah. Even you know though what's interesting? It was, yeah. You 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 come out of this one, part two, and then you. When my wife and I started watching part one. We didn't finish it. We finished it after part two, 
and it makes it, 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 it it's meant to be one story. It was never meant to be cut in the middle. It's not two yeah. books. It's one 100%, book. hundred percent, man. One hundred percent. it feels mm-hmm. Denis, like so much it, better, that first movie, knowing that I can go on and watch or, you know, it's fresh in my mind at this point, the second movie. You know what I mean? So if I watch these, it's just going to be like Lord of the Rings all over again. I'm going to watch, hopefully, the extended cuts. People um, spoke about Batman Begins like this. Bro. I remember yeah. they, they, they were saying, like, you know, he's not really Batman until like the end but like that was one of the things i loved about it that origin story that like really fleshed out like how he became batman it, like made yeah. it it made it's sense a build. Yeah. yeah and like that's what's cool about batman begins and then when he gets into the yeah. he's got the coolest cape, okay, whatever but um i completely agree with you i think uh this is the problem like you know i think a good storyteller whether it's comic book artist uh a poet uh you know a, you know a, just a a director, uh, whatever, they have like the the story they want to tell. They have the start, the middle, the end, the full execution of it. And the first, it felt to me that this this is one entire story, one big trilogy. This, like he said, he's only going to do three, so Messiah will be essentially the third. So it felt like this was Act One, like the first Dune movie was Act One, and then this is Act Two. We get the payoff, and hopefully, it continues on. But um, it was a smart yeah. move because they. Every other version of this, I mean, there was a mini series too, but um, it was the unfilmable book, right? Because they're like, they're, there's no way you're going to cram all this into. Uh, there's so much detail in this book into a two-hour movie at the time. I mean, back in the you know in the '80s, it's like you can't go much more over two hours, maybe two, two and a, you know, two and a quarter or something like that. Uh, there was just no way it was going to be one two and a half hour movie. There was just no way you were going to do that and make it uh, compelling or an understandable. They said for Alan Moore so. said the same thing about Watchmen, yeah. but Al- Alan Moore yeah. is probably uh, like anti-establishment man. Yeah, you know? Alan Moore is just an angry dude. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why we love him. So Brad Costy is putting his hand in the air, saying he's guilty. So am I. Um, I was already interested, and this, so you're the opposite, then Nathan Henderson. I was already interested in pre-order, regardless of the second movie. Good stuff. So you're uh, for true fans like uh, uh, Trevor here. Um, so we got <clears throat> Mark Attack. I think a lot of people are buying into the hype. And when this comes, they have already pre-ordered. No, Not a bad no, point. No. Not a bad point. I think that is inevitable. Um, Guilty After Dune 2, 12-inch movie streams. Channel member, thank you very much for being here. Uh, Darren, these are interesting comments. Seeing the second movie and anticipation for Messiah and Paul's eventual uh, eventual fate, uh, now I'm strongly considering pre-ordering as this might be the best sci-fi book adaptation ever. That is high praise. It, yeah, I... Yeah, I, okay, I'm going to save that for later on part of the show, but yeah. Dune 1 and 2 is like one movie. Yeah, it's based on the first book. That's another fair point. Mm-hmm. I haven't seen 2... I haven't seen two, but after watching it the third time, paying more attention and combining with Dune 84, it makes a lot more sense. All oh, right, Jay, he's talking about the first Dune movie. One, yeah. yeah, okay, good stuff. Um, I guess I got to put two, not, Dune, not, d- yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, no, just please. You, you, uh, I can't tell if this guy's joking or not. He, Mike, have you watched the original trilogy yet? You watch that and then you can watch, uh, then you have permission to watch the rest. Um, Right, we'll flick through some of these images. So, so I've pre-ordered Ian's pre-ordered. Jose, you pulled the trigger as well, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm the tr- Trevor, you as well. Oh yeah. Yep. So then Eddie, I'm really, really interested in the, to, to 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 hear what Eddie thinks um, uh, when when he sees it. But just we'll start off with Eddie. Actually, just forget about the movie or whatever. Like, well, I suppose this is based in the first Dune, so. What what are your thoughts on what you see? I'm going to flick through these. Feel free to stop me or tell me to move on to a different photo or whatever. I think it's phenomenal, man. I think it's insane. Um, yeah, I think the likeness is amazing. It looks great. The suit looks great. Everything about it is amazing. I don't love the sculpted version I don't either. at no. all. Something about it. like I just Hot Toys do better sculpted. In Art do better rooted. The Jet a Black. a different vibe. Jet black hair, I think it might be. It makes, uh, yes. Yes. It makes it Chalamet look different, there, too. Yeah. Like It makes him look younger, maybe? I don't know. It gives a completely different look to him. But um, This here. This is, did you notice in a certain part of the movie his hair is different? 
Mm. In the first movie or in the second, you're saying? The second one. It starts off like this, but I don't want to you know, spoil it, whatever. It's not a spoiler, but it's just a certain... There's just this bit of a change, I think. But this this here reminds me of a certain part of the movie. But um, I think I know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this this would be like... Yeah, I don't want to... Do, do you feel like some yes. of the shots... This is the best accessory ever. Forget that <laughs> churro, guys. This is where it's at. You need the kangaroo churro. mouse. Ooh, we could have Muad'Dib <laughs> eating the churro. That would be perfect. Yes, you that could. You just, could. It's <laughs> the <laughs> ultimate flex right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, do you know what's interesting, though? Yeah. During the three-day window, which has been going on three years now for the uh, the inner rooted uh, two-pack, they said that the handcuffs were like the exclusive but i'm pretty sure every single route of two pack came with the handcuffs and they're saying that this yeah. is exclusive if you order direct from queen studio i'd nearly put money that no matter who you order from you're going to get this with a mouse i think i heard that it was a mistake that everybody got the handcuffs so i'm not really sure if that's the case really or not, but yeah like it wasn't i wish it was a mistake that we got the little controller thing man Oh, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's a, a that was a weird thing. That was really weird. I want one of those controllers, man. It's funny. Um, I was saying this on Collecting Weekly, I think, or maybe LWO. Uh, I grew up in the desert, so kangaroo mouse is like I used to see those a lot as a kid, and I liked them a lot. So I kind of, if I got it, I would want that accessory for that reason. But um, I so. Do they look I'm gonna like stick this, to or? my guns. I think on this, even if I love Dune Two, I don't think I'm gonna get this, because I need to. Not first of all, I'm a little worried that I'll love it as much for hype, and then not necessarily need Dune in my collection. I love I love the first movie, and I'm I'm thinking the way everybody's talking about. It, I'm gonna love the second movie, and I like Timothy Chalamet a lot as an actor. Like the movies that I've seen him in, I'm I really enjoy. So all of those things I think are going to make me want the figure, but I don't think over time I need Dune in my collection. So I think it would be more of like a impulse buy than anything. So I'm going to hold off. I think this is one of those things. That's a very that, disciplined and fair point. I think this is one of those things that Shane was saying earlier. Like it's just it's iconic. I think it's going to be one of those things that people come back to, like Aliens. I and think so. Predator. It's wow. it's long term. Like I can't see going years and years without watching this again it's good for me it's going to be like lord of the rings and maybe the ot i watch it like every like a couple praise. of years yeah. oh no it's I, that I, good i really think it's that good and i i will say that like i came out of this going okay that was awesome that was a minimum four star but i did say i don't think it's a masterpiece but having thought about it like i couldn't shake it like i think that's a good sign for a movie i kept thinking about it I kept thinking about the music and i was listening to the soundtrack and i and like i said the cinematography and i was like oh that bit was really cool and oh even that bit which could have been potentially there's a part in it that if you explained to me i was like this is gonna be stupid and it was awesome and like i kept thinking about it i, I literally i never don't really go to the cinema midweek but i was like right I'm finishing work and i'm going straight to the cinema got myself a burrito so good and then went and, and watched the movie again and uh it was just um a really you know when you have a really good watch like you're all in on it, like um, so. I I think yeah. I I I I can I could concede that okay, yeah. It I think it actually is a masterpiece. I can concede that, but I still don't think it's the greatest movie ever made. I think what annoyed me was that like no. all these posts of I oh my god, Dune is Dune Two is now the IMDb best movie. It's not the best movie ever made. That is absolute recency bias hype train. Um. Or, you know, it's the greatest sci-fi ever, ever ever made. I think that is recency bias. Oh, Trevor, Trevor's drinking I the Kool-Aid. I can see it. Also, I don't think yeah. it is right now. I think you got I think you need time for something like yeah. that to be yes. the and greatest that, that, of all that time. Is, yeah, you know I mean? 100%. That's my point. Time to marinate. Time to... How does it stand up? Because once the, the hype dies, and you give it a few years, and then you compare it to your favorite uh, sci-fi movies, then you can kind of go, okay... Yeah, this probably isn't as good as Robocop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that one's for Eddie. <laughs> See, the thing is, if if they nail Messiah, if they nail it, this has got the potential to be the best trilogy ever made. 
I can't imagine you just don't. The only but, reason like, there are things in Messiah that I don't think people are going to be. The only expecting. reason I disagree with you is because the first movie doesn't hold up the way Fellowship does. I don't like. That's the, a fair it's point. It's not as interesting. And I don't Watch think the first movie is as good. I compared it to Batman Begins, but I don't think it's as good as Batman Begins. When you see the second movie, right. though. Eddie, I think yeah. you're gonna. Yeah, feel but I can watch Fellowship. On that's its true. Own. That's true. I can true. watch Fellowship on its own without having to. God, watch where's two the towers. popcorn? Yeah, but you. Yeah, but you want to watch. You want to <laughs> yes, watch the two towers right after it. Yes, you know what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And and it's that compounding effect. I talked about that elsewhere. The two towers makes the first better. There's that mm-hmm. thing. It just makes it so much better. I knew so, so many people who didn't know the Lord of the Rings, and and my wife included, and we she walked out of like that. What? That's the end? I'm like, well, that's part one of three. Like they're just they're just getting started. Like don't worry about it. But it was kind of a weird place to end, right? They're, they're she's now. like, we've been watching those hobbits walk around for three hours. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, but once you know the whole story, I think coming back to that, you know, even if you even if you didn't know it going in, I think it it makes it better. Believe me, Dune One is even better in my mind than it was. Did you guys episode. like it more than Avatar? Oh yeah, the oh, new yeah. one. Not. I think not Avatar Airbenders. sucks. Yeah, the, yeah, Avatar. I'm not a fan better. of the first movie. Not a fan of the second movie at all. I'm with you, Shane. I'm with Eddie, you. I didn't. I didn't really love the second one. Yeah. But I mean the wow, dang, I, can't believe, I loved it. First and second, so. but you like you like Batman and Robin. Avatar, <laughs> Avatar, the first one I enjoyed, but but I, I but I have like when I think about Avatar, I think about it watching it in 3D and the cinematic experience yeah. and so on, and being carried away in the you know in the story. Uh, but but the second one, not so much. Can I say I I've seen some comments recently about people not wanting to go and see Dune two again or the second time because it's a long movie two hours 40 odd minutes i find that crazy some of the best movies made i go back to the old epics like ben hur it was an hour longer than dune 2 and that you movie had to stay overnight sensational right. but it's, a good movie captures your attention i just think there's attention deficit in this world that we're living in the TikTok, TikTok movie. generation. Yeah. Like, there's yeah. a reason things are like 15 seconds long. It's like no one can cope Sorry. with anything. Like, I mean, the first thing I just I turn off my phone. One. Do you know? It's like, do you know, like, I, I, I love Jeez. a slow, a slow movie, but they've got to, mm-hmm. they've got to give. Um, it has to be a bit of a reward, and that's maybe one of my criticisms of the first movie. Prior to seeing the second movie, that it was so slow, and yeah, there was bits of action, and the cinematography is great, but it wasn't like. It was slow, but there was there was no like mind bending occurrences. I was like, oh, that bit was amazing. But I get why it had to be like that. Having seen the second one, do you know? Did you go back and watch the first one again, Shane? I did, I did, okay. yeah. And um, like I, 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 I am, I'm, I'm deaf. I'm gonna go see it again. I am actually the second one. I <laughs> yeah. if I can squeeze in that. Uh, <laughs> I want to squeeze in that first one. I don't know when I'm gonna find the time to. To watch the, the first one again for that. How recently? Might watch the first one. How recently did you all see the first one before going to see the second one? I I watched it not Saturday gone, Saturday before I got up, I watched it in the morning, and then I went to see it that night. So it was literally as fresh as it could be. Yeah. Same. Okay. Yeah. Just want to address this comment, Stan Stanley. Um, Dune two should win an Oscar. Now here's an interesting thing. Uh, I'm just. I'm I'm buzzing that Oppenheimer won Best Picture. I think it was fully deserved, and uh, delighted for Killian Murphy more so than any of the other awards it got. And it's it's great that Nolan got his his uh, director's Oscar as well. But it was at the John Campion, and John Campion is majorly high on Dune Two, and he he reckons that Dune Two actually falls into the 2024 category. So if it does get nominated i'm sure it will get nominated for oscars i'm sure it will get some some oscars maybe i don't know maybe not best picture or whatever who knows maybe it does i don't know but i no doubt will get nominated for stuff and it'll probably get stuff but it's actually fallen in the 2024 category now what he said is that if if oppenheimer if dune 2, dune 2 was in the 2023 category and it was up to 2023 do you know what i'm saying is in oscars of the, the, the ones was, last night if yeah if it was this it year's was, that it would have beat Oppenheimer and it wouldn't have even been close. That's what, that's what John Campion was saying. Dude, they they moved it because of that. They moved the time. 
Now, they haven't said that officially, but everybody in the business is like, they did not want to go up against Oppenheimer. They wanted Villeneuve to get the director nod. So, I mean, they're playing little games, and they moved it to 2024 just to avoid that. So, you know. So if something else comes out really good around the same time next year, that'll be like 2025, 26. Yeah, yeah, maybe there may be people holding off some some movies now until 2025. Mm -hmm. Like, to be honest, like, whether the movie I like wins an Oscar or makes a billion or is critically claimed, I don't really care. If I like it, I like it, end of. But it it is kind of nice. It's a little bit of an icing on the cake if it's like, all right, it does actually do well and your friends like it and... Especially you know, when it's it, sci-fi, it gets, yeah. you know what I mean? Like but the Oscars, Academy I say, Awards. is highly corrupt anyway. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's a good point, uh, Stanley. So, uh, Lisan al Gayab, uh, my pronunciation, my Fremen pronunciation is, it needs a lot of work. Oh, my God. You guys hear yeah. about those sh- screenings, uh, f- and I think it's like 4, 4DX or I don't know, something like that, where the theater, where the seats are like, you're watching Dune and they're like shaking and like they're... Yeah oh my i saw like water. a clip of people where, yeah like there's water that's like being thrown at you i mean not a lot like, of water in this movie but you know I mean. <laughs> yeah i saw a clip on it uh and, and and i was like wow imagine you're sitting there and it's like moving and shaking the, while the worm it's happening. ride and you're, you're yeah you're, 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 you're pretty cool yeah imagine watching basic basic instinct in a 4d <laughs> um thank you that sounds I'm here like all week. An awful, an awful <laughs> lot of tap dancing. <laughs> oh my god, what a lot of shite tap dancing! Yeah, such a load of like it's it's you're allowed to change your mind, folks. You can change your mind or actually have a think about something. Scientists do it all the time, so I think we're entitled. To yeah, I don't know why people get so mad. Like if you have an yeah. opinion one day and then you decide you you check the resources, you check. You're supposed to devote yourself to then, an ideal, and then, that's and, what it is. Yeah. Die. But I think you're allowed to change your mind. Like if we yeah, think this this today, but then we some we come into more information, more data, and then we're like, oh, actually, uh, my opinion is different now after that information. I think you're allowed. I don't understand why people. No, you have to stick to your guns, and that's your opinion. Mm-hmm. You can't change it. I think if you have a moral code on something, you're like, okay, I think it's okay to do this, and the next day you're not. That's different. But like this was like, yeah. it's art. It is, sub- yeah. um, it is subjective. You're gonna like. I like to take my time with things. To be honest, if um, I just, I know it irked me when I saw that IMDb post. It was like Dune Two is now the, the number one most ranked movie of all time. And I was like, because there's a small sample size. Okay, and I'm using. Okay, they're not even that big words, but it's a small sample size. And if the overwhelming population of people that actually voted are overwhelmingly positive, that skews the numbers, but it will eventually balance out over time. So that's something that's like, oh my God, this is just a clickbait headline. And the, the Irish, um, there's Joe.ie, this is this Irish Instagram thing. They're notorious for clickbait. They've got really, really clickbaity over the last few years, no matter what's it about. And they did it as well. They just posted that, you know, Dune 2 is the the highest rated IMDb, as if it actually matters, it doesn't, and they clearly don't understand sample size. So, yeah. Um, yeah, there's no fear of that, Mark Attack. Don't don't you worry. Don't you worry. Plus, it wasn't directed by Christopher Nolan. It can't be a good movie. Um, all right, folks. Uh, we'll actually talk about this, folks. So, Eddie, you don't know yet because... You, you, so, you think it's good, but you haven't seen the movie yet, and even if you see the movie, you reckon you're not going to like it, or not going not, to... Not, you're not going to... I'm going to try to not change my opinion and stick to my guns on that one and you not get it. But we'll see. Do, you, do you know when you'll watch it, Eddie? Uh, no, because I haven't seen the first one in a long time. I kind of want to go watch it tonight just because I've been putting it off. But um, I, I won't be able to watch the first one before I go watch it. I, I think I it's tonight, if, so. if you do that, you can still rewatch the first one because you'll see Absolutely. things in the first movie that will you'll you'll learn a little bit more and you'll be like i feel like it enhances the first movie a lot totally watching the second one so yep i think you could watch it afterwards and still enjoy it a lot okay maybe i will then if not then i'll do it this weekend for sure right so i need help here with um i just did my recorded my my um my video my kind of pre-order preview on this earlier on and I'm pretty sure I went, all right, so it comes with a bunch of different hands, a magnetic base, and comes with an extra sculpt with the mask, or the mask you can have as a backpack, and then it has 
it was like it was like when you know when someone's singing along they know the first line of the chorus but they don't know the second or third i have no <laughs> idea what most of these things are it's like i know the top one's a thumper because i love the sound of it i know that there's the dagger which is uh the tooth of the sandworm and the holster but and the thing that he uses to you know grab onto the thing with the yoke i i i, I don't want to i completely spoil it but one of these things looks like a watch the second down that's... thing on the left. Mm. Anyone know what that is? Second thing on the left. Oh, see, see underneath the thumper. I cannot mm. remember what he did. I think it's in the first movie. Uh, that's the thing that he uh, it vibrates the sand when they got out of the the tent, and the the, the sand had overcome the tent. It kind of, uh, or no, you know, actually, no, he used that to. Yeah, I think it had something to do with that because he he also saw the uh, spice in the sand using that too as well in the air. It has something to do with that. I can't remember exactly what it was. I have no. I, I thought someone said it. But I know like he a... used it to get out of the sand. Like it vibrates the sand and, and like they, they were they. So they you're not talking about the thing that thumps and has a really cool sound. Not the sound, thumper, but... the thing below. Okay. It, yeah. Because yeah. Uh, I think I might I have said exactly it. Yeah, what this it's is. Called. I I on on the video I was like yeah this is I heard someone say it was like a. A camera or something. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even going to re-record no. it. I'm just going to let people uh, tear me apart. What's the thing? Yeah, that it blows the sand out of the way. Yeah, sand right. compaction tool, I think, is something like that. It's a leaf blower. He's got a pocket leaf That's blower. Right. Great, okay. And then see, like, see above the hands on the left, it looks like a watch. There is a gun that he has that's kind of a foldable gun that uh, I think was in one scene. Okay. Uh, didn't really use it all that much i don't think so but i think it's towards there. the end and then he has to give it back because he's like you'll you'll get it back when you when you've right. earned it right okay um do you think for 475 dollars and that's not including shipping or customs i i think this is on the pricey side i gotta say i've still committed but i am um, i think there's my, a lot my of tap dancing shoes were caught in my heels that's what i'm saying you know mm -hmm. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of layers on the outfit. There's mm -hmm. an awful lot of layers and detail. And plus, Shane, the backpack, you can open it up. I saw that. Is that real? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, these things here. Okay, why didn't I just flick onto these I'm moron? Um so the the top the highest thing here on the right, that's the thing that's that blows the, the sand. Compactor out of tool. That's the sand compactor yeah, we know what these two things on the right are, we know what the mm -hmm. thumper is on the left. The top left thing I don't remember what that is. Because these are probably only in like, it could be only in 30 seconds in the movie. I can't remember what that top is. Is that a, thing a viewer? Is. Did he use that? That's to a, view? It's a, uh, yeah, that's a viewer. Like a, it's almost like a telescope view, type of thing. Yeah. A viewfinder. Yeah. It's funny because the other thing looks more like a telescope, but um, yeah, the scale is lost. Okay, these things that's here, the that thing looks like a gun anyway. And that looks like a watch. It does look like a watch. I'm sure it's not a watch, but. On Carter said it's the Freeman compass that Duncan gave him. Ah, okay. Which the, the thing on the wrist thing, yeah? Yeah. See, Hamilton, that watch company, are doing these Dune watches. And like, other, they're like ridiculously expensive, like, but it looks kind of like this. It, it like actual, you know, obviously this looks like a watch and the shape is similar, but it tells the time or whatever, like, but um, yeah, they're kind of limited edition, highly overpriced. So, um, yeah, <laughs> right up early, basically. Um, so you got the the dagger oh this is what ian was talking about now ian mm. from an engineering point of view how would you like them apples oh it's lovely nice hinge it looks like the egg hail left but it, it actually looks like my landscape camera bag <laughs> right yeah it does so you the, the the kind of the sand blower thing fits in here and i presume under this mesh here as well some of the other things pop in as well. Mm -hmm. I wonder yeah, is there space for the like viewfinder. It. That's very impressive. Yeah. You, at least you've somewhere to store your accessories. No more exactly. tackle box. Yeah. I would have liked the agony box. I'm I'm surprised they didn't put that in there. Just the box. I think they did that with the Og Toys version, didn't they? Yeah. Yes. And I have another question. Actually, this is branded Dune, right? But we know that. A lot of people, anyway, are definitely buying it on the strength of Dune 2. Yeah. I do not recall him using these things on the bottom right. 
No, the first it, movie. It doesn't no, and then there's a any... shot. There's a shot yep. in the promos. Yeah. If you go so they know what they're doing with the worm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. I'm so excited about this. I'm way more excited than I should be, like because this is. Yeah. So eighteen more, eighteen more months, I'd imagine. All right. So uh, anyone else have anything to add on that? Yeah, they haven't gone eighteen months on anything yet. I mean, well, I mean, delivery wise, it might be a, a thing, but like, I mean, in terms yeah, of yeah, I suppose like, from from pre order to, to first review, first, yeah, is like we've only been like, I think Batman's the longest one at like seventeen months or something. It might be gone on eighteen months now. I saw there's, those there's more lines though. now though. There's more mm-hmm. lines. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, but Could we don't know what their manufacturing aspect is, but yeah. But Viper's still wanting to have hands-on control over QC, isn't he? So that's good. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Oh, abs- absolutely. So yeah. I'd rather wait. Me too. Six months and get the product that looks like the prototype. Mm-hmm. An extra on, six months. Steady Sorry. on, Marco. It's a family show. <laughs> uh, the design choice, though, of that popcorn bucket. I mean, what were they thinking? Like, what were they thinking? <laughs> Star Crash is all in for Inert. Where's the Batman? Um, I've seen the picture of a palette. I don't know if it's true. Trevor, you gotta you gotta jump out. I do. I'm sorry. No worries, man. When are you, when are you, what you want to plug? Where can people catch you? When's the uh, next uh, six one six pack? We just did the one six pack. Uh, I've got uh, also the uh, Toy Photo Bomb, which is best of the month every month. So that's coming up, I think, on the fifth of April. Uh, next month and tonight if you're into Mythic Legions uh, it's Legions Lounge and we're going to be casting the Legions Lounge mo- or the uh, Mythic Legions movie which should be fun and Zendaya may or may not be in there I don't know I'm sure so if you're, if you're not a fan <laughs> right oh yeah. <laughs> so all the, Flor- the Florence Pugh people would be fresh out of luck that's right <laughs> well somebody else <laughs> might have picked Florence Pugh I, you know, I don't know yeah, we'll yeah. see but that's it uh, thanks for having me on appreciate oh, it man, thanks for fun. giving up your time I appreciate it appreciate Jose I will get you next time man I will get you uh, okay good. it was nice <laughs> seeing you know, man. man too good man I know right. man he's, he's, uh, he's I, I, know, I, I thought you had him there I thought you nearly saw his yeah. Achilles yeah. I thought you, you had him yeah. ropes you know yeah. almost Yeah. so maybe next next week wonder how long the streak can go okay so um, we're going to move on and pick the next thing Aha, so we have a super chat, local celebrity. Thanks very much, Ryan, I do appreciate that. Why didn't the triangle argue with the circle? Because it was pointless. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I do appreciate the super chat, though. Uh, thank you. Uh, Ryan, have you um, have you seen Dune 2, actually? I don't think I've heard your thoughts on it. If you're still here, give us a thumbs up or thumbs down. Uh, on doing too, but much appreciated super chat and thanks for watching. Thank you. I and I'm I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm guessing you would have liked it, but uh, yeah, give us a thumbs up or thumbs down in the uh, the chat if you're still here, or even give us a star rating. Uh, what do you think of it? Thanks, Ryan. I do appreciate the super chat. Blitz 0065 Superman and Superman will be good to see more of. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so the next thing, who wants to pick there, Eddie? Want to pick? Uh, we can get Shin over with, I guess. <laughs> Eddie, uh, I can see he's getting, uh, he's ready just to, to give Jose a piece of his mind there. <laughs> no, no, I don't. <laughs> I feel like Jose is outnumbered, like. <laughs> but uh, it's it, it's I mean it's it's friendly banter, and I think it, that yeah, he makes good points. I'm you know until it's so not. Just, no, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Do you want to do you want to go first, Eddie? Uh, yeah, I think this one looks even better than Balin. Um, mm-hmm. I uh, even initial thoughts, I was like, "Dang, they really, they really nailed her." Um, yeah, it looks amazing, and I thought it was really cool they released them both at the same time because if I was getting one, I would need both. I think because I just think that they should be displayed together. They they look amazing together, um, and I love that all of the new releases are getting those movable eyes man i think it really yeah. helps with uh that dead stare that sometimes hot toys could have and i think just and especially she doesn't say eyes. much she doesn't yeah. say much like so she does a lot of acting with her eyes someone said too that that dead stare kind of works for her because she had that look 
in the show a lot and I was like yeah that's true she does kind of have that very like blank look about her so but I think it looks good I love the way her hair looks I think her suit is also very well braid. done yeah I didn't even notice mm. in the show that she had the braid I don't think um but yeah I think it looks uh freaking awesome and it'll be cool to see UCCFL guys that having uh some orange CC CCFLs will be cool I think so yeah, 100. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, looks really good. Comes at a... So what you got? Separate rolling eyeballs function. Detailed costume with meticulous fabric selection. Yeah, kind of very much like... Uh, looks like um, Game of Thrones mixed with Star Wars sets, really, doesn't it? It's kind of like... What's that? Jamie Lannister armor, that kind of buzz? Um, oh, yeah. LED lightsaber yeah. powered by USB. Yeah, you need a CCFL, man. I'm not sure where they're... Yeah, USB powered is a step in the right direction, but they, they just need to nail those sabers. They need to dial them in a bit better, or a lot better. Just They should just like buy CCFLs from a bunch of different CCFL makers. Take them apart and see if they can do it better. Do you think that there is a dangerous uh, part of CCFLs and that's why they don't do them? Because like, they can get hot. Yep. You know what I mean? And they could break easily, and yep. maybe that's why they don't do them, you know? Like, this yeah. is the safest, because even though it's not a toy, it it's still labeled as a toy, so maybe there's like a some kind of rule that they can't have something that, uh, that dangerous or that hazardous. Like, it only takes one house to burn down for them to realize this yeah. was a terrible idea. Yeah. Like, I, I wouldn't leave, in fairness, like, why would anyone leave their collection lights on when they're not in the house or when they're not in the room? True. Why? Like, I just waste electricity. Like, I turn them on when I come in here when I'm you know, working on videos or streaming or reposing stuff or whatever because I like, you know, you want to have them on. But um, I, I set them to 50% and, like, they don't really get that warm, to be honest, but I wouldn't set them to 100, to be honest. I just, they also don't need to be set to 100 because. They're pretty damn bright, do you know? But again, that's me getting them made from R15 Custom, where someone else would have, I don't know, Chris Custom and someone else. There's three or four different ways of, like, I presume there's loads of people who make them. Like, I'm sure even, like, Pete from OFAC makes his own ones, like, so it depends on yeah. who you get them from, you know, so. Um, yeah, and I never had a figure ones, but I've had custom statues that had sabers on them. And the... Uh, those sabers would get hot and the um the box it's like for the adapter to plug in the wall would get hot too for those anyway mm. yeah or maybe those are also bigger like the sabers are probably double the size of a six scale and quarter scale so. mm. yeah is anyone on the panel actually getting this yep i've pre-ordered but I'm the opposite to Eddie on this. This isn't, in my opinion, it's not better than Balin. It's um, it's not better than Balin at all. I don't like how flat the hair is. It's too clumpy. There needs to be more separation. And it looks like she's just come off the ski slope. <laughs> it's too, too much pinkiness in her skin tone. So, But that, I still really love it. But that's what I hope they improve on I gotta say I love the two of them I think they look great um, I've yet to see a figure from the Soka line that I think looks bad I think they all look really really good really high standards just based on the show I won't be getting any of them doesn't matter if they could come with a pulse and real DNA from the actor or actress and I they wouldn't <laughs> pull the trigger on them so uh, uh, yeah but Ian would, would like that though yeah. if they had a little bit of DNA <laughs> all right does anyone have anything to add here <laughs> right, uh, so no Ian's i, I really like this. it yeah yeah, yeah. i'm go getting on. it go yeah on. i mean you guys have seen my photo with her you know how i i asked her for coffee oh, at right. one time at the, uh, la comic-con and yeah. you know she, she hit me with that i don't speak english but you know yeah. it's fine you know but you know what you, <laughs> the um like what wayne gretzky said you know you you miss 100 percent of the shots you you don't take i, I admire you i do admire you yeah <laughs> so that's it um and then Eddie, obviously, like, do you, okay, here's the thing. Do, do you think you can have one without the other? No. 
I don't, I don't think, think you can have a moment of theater. Yeah, okay. I think like you could that. get away with if you have Sabine and you wanted to pair her with Sabine, I think you can get away with it. Not a bad point, yeah. Not a bad point, yeah. That that I get that. Yeah, because you can they had a they went toe to toe, I suppose, yeah. So that, that's fair enough. Okay. So so far, if you're just joining us and you're getting any sort of value from the you're enjoying the 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 stream, feel free to hit that like button or subscribe and of course as usual there's a link to channel membership in the in the chat if you uh, want to support the channel so we have talked about dublin dublin comic con we've discussed Mwadib, balen shin we've done the snap jose has defended his title not that he's ever lost it so what we have left we've got the uh, film reel we've got special delivery and then the bitcoin thing which won't take long but uh yeah all right what do we want to do how about special deliveries Okay, all right. Uh, anyone else? Anyone get anything new this week? Mm. Or sold something ending in? I out? sold. Uh, I still have two Thor statues, and last of my statues, and I've had one on eBay for like, feels like a year now, and it sold randomly this morning. So wow. it's the um, for those who know statues, it's the sideshow Martin Canali, the most recent Thor premium format. Um, and did you get a chunk of change for it? Yeah, not. The market is down bad in statues. Even I would say even hard worse, to sell. Even worse than um, hot toys. But uh, I got I what I got. I'm not disappointed with. I didn't get what I paid for the statue. So yeah, of course. But I course, uh, yeah. didn't get that much. It wasn't that much lower. I think I paid about maybe like seven fifty, eight hundred total. Maybe less. I don't remember. I'm, I'm ballparking, but and I sold it for six fifty. So I think I lost like a hundred bucks on it or something. But yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's part of the game. Yeah. It is part of the game. Yeah. So it is part of the game. Uh, what about yourself, Jose? Uh, new figures. Nothing this week, which is good because I had that week with that onslaught that I told you guys with Black Adam, Padme. Uh, invader all came the same week so uh, i could use the break uh cuervo jose has been getting me into graded comics so i've been buying some of them and uh it's like a rabbit hole i do not want to go into that but i i asked him a few questions and then he just started propelling me with a bunch of messages and uh he i just picked up this one which is the uh a graded comic the first appearance of carnage uh issue 361 uh so right here yeah, so it's uh, nice. it's really nice, graded 9.6, uh, so pretty high. Uh, so yeah. Ian approves uh, of the grading. <laughs> Ian approves. 9.6? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nah. He, he likes... He likes uh, I like decimal, decimal places. places. Yeah. 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 Danny would be shaking his head right now. He can't. <laughs> As well, oh, I got man. it from Quervo, so... Yeah, I, I, got, a, it's a, I got a, cool. a shipping notice for a graded comic today. Um, that One that I ordered, like maybe two years ago it's a it's a cover by alex ross of venom mm. he did like all these villain portrait covers and then he did some uh hero portrait covers it, the the way he drew venom looks sick uh but i i more get graded slabs just because like i like the art like i don't have any well that's a lot i have well i have the first uh issue of the single released um it's right here but the glare is fucking up i have the i have a it's the first uh issue in the solo run of cosmic ghost rider that i have saw signed by the the comic artist or the the writer uh donny cates so i don't love to do graded comics because it's like it feels like another thing but i do mm -hmm. have a couple yeah, it's definitely another rabbit hole that I'm yeah. trying to definitely like <laughs> restrain myself because it's really, really cool. There's a lot of books that I really, really like, but uh, at the same time, I'm like, there's so much that I want figure wise and other responsibilities I got to take care of that I got to, you know, I got to slow down for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. W was there not some scandal on, I don't collect comics and get them graded or anything like that. But was there not some scandal in CDC in terms of their grading and staff? There was a bit of corruption. I think there was recently yeah. something going on with CGC. Zach, Zach is all into that. He knows better. But I think 
recently there was something. Hmm. So like the what what was it like they weren't weren't giving them the appropriate grades or what like or they gave some I, it's just it's all it's all subjective. So yeah. the grading yeah. system it, it could be very subjective and there were certain things that they I think people were getting in comics graded at a certain level un unslabbing them and then sending them back and getting a higher grade or a lower grade or it's like the exact same book they just sent it back and got a different grade or it's all very mm. subjective that's kind of why i don't even care for it really but yeah. i do like yeah the way that it's displayed in the case it makes like yeah nice yeah it, it, yeah it's, 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 slab, it's, it's nice the, yeah yeah i, I think yeah. that looks that's pretty cool uh what about yourself ian ending um uh figure wise no nothing in uh i don't typically sell so nothing out i have i'm building up my 4k remastered um library if that's what you call it so i've had about 10 different movies come in this week yeah 10 11 that's a 11 lot movies. of 4k but, hey we like 4k <laughs> mm -hmm. but that's yeah tough. so building that up but no figures and that's another thing i collect too physical media so it's like physical media comics figures it's like autographs Space. you've seen Space. my autographs too right it's just like yeah yeah i gotta prioritize yeah gotcha mark attack reckons you bought uh four module cases tonight and uh, i actually agree oh almost <laughs> that's, that's almost i'm You're not actually wrong no <laughs> i'm in funny. discussions with brian about yeah. something all right so we'll, 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 we'll watch your career with lots of great interest um i oh yeah so obviously the lights went batshit last uh week and when i went to see dune the uh the kind of the, the electronics chain at the store that i bought the that 10 hub usb thing um 10 port usb hub they had some of them left so like there was near the cinema there was there was uh, one of those things and i found in my wallet a gift card that i my, my sister had given me for i don't know christmas or something and it was still like 50 euro on it which was great so i went in and they had one of them left the same one i just got the same one again and it um was reduced from like 40 something down to 29 so that was a win and then i went in before the cinema to the bookshop near the cinema and they had a copy of dune so i got that with the balance and still a few euro left so that was an absolute win um then at dublin comic con there was this guy selling posters and they were like kind of they're they more like prints they were smaller posters like they're about like i don't know was it a i don't want to say eight i'm not gonna hear a2 a i think it was a2 but um or maybe not exactly but they were like I, I, the first one that caught my eye was uh, Aliens, the uh, original movie poster where she has uh, Newt in her hand. She got the blaster and just says Aliens. It's like this time it's war and has all the details on it. And I was like, that is something that would look very well in the collection room. And it said fifteen euro, and I was like, and it was framed with a nice black frame. And I was like, all right. So I went over thinking the print will be fifteen, and he go, oh, you want a frame? That'll be fifty euro. Sure enough, the fully framed print, fifteen euro. And there was, he was doing like four, or sorry, three for 40. So I'm not sure how well this is going to translate, but yeah, I went a little mental. But, so this isn't taken out now, but it actually looks quite well here. So it's framed already, and it's the kind of the original kind of promotional poster they have, like, you know, a smaller version, obviously. So I got this. I'll actually show you. Um, that was pretty awesome. I love this though, but and then this one caught my eye as well, just because it's just a real vintage look of it. So the New Hope one, and then I got the Empire one, and the Return of the Jedi one, and the Terminator, <laughs> Terminator Two. One. So like, yeah, but we're, we're good for prints. The only thing though. What I don't like, I should have, I was, I must have been on autopilot because I was like, I was looking, I was half, I was actually talking to the guy um, who was, uh, had the Batman armor and I was talking to him while I was ordering these and that. 
I'm just looking. I didn't realize in today that the Return the Jedi poster is actually the one from the special edition. Because these ones here are all the original ones. And then the one for Return of the Jedi is just like a special edition on it. And it. They look not in the same sync. You know what I mean? But um, yeah, look, first world problems. Um, Mark yeah, Attack's disappointed you did not get a RoboCop poster. They didn't have one. They didn't have one. Yeah, they didn't have one. I, I, I thought surely they'd have that, you know, the classic when he's walking through the wall one or even the second one. But um, no, I, I, I did not. So, uh, all right, let's go back to, I don't think just too much left. I'm actually just going to get this one out of the way because I know that no one, people are just going to start leaving. Right. So just for the crack, um, just for the crack, what I'm going to do every single episode before the episode, I'm going to buy €10 euro worth of Bitcoin. And uh, we're going to keep track of this week to week and just see if it's up or down. And uh, eventually, I'm going to use this to get a figure or something. So this is the second week, and I put €10 euro in both times. And €10 euro is now minus fees and stuff like that, worth 16.35. It's a slow burn. And if you have been paying attention, today is a massive day for Bitcoiners because Bitcoin hit an all-time high today of like 72 thousand five hundred dollars that is insane so it looks like it's the start of a what we call a bull run but yeah i'm gonna keep doing this dollar cost averaging like you know um like i obviously i i do the whole bitcoin thing like on my my personal life but uh just for the crack every episode i'm gonna buy uh 10 euro and just see total invested and see if it goes up or down we'll see uh how that works out shane see see if you're doing that Apart from doing the weekly change, do the compound trend from the first point that you've done it on the show. That was so. That so would have been you, it. You, to to all oh, right. Okay, I thought yeah, it was the previous yeah. week. Right. Okay. No, no. So like I, last week, I, I bought ten euro, and this week I bought ten euro. Uh, but because of the fees okay. and stuff like that, it would have dropped down a bit. Like because uh, they obviously take fees, whatever. But hopefully, if it keeps increasing. You know the, the, the value will go up, but inevitably to get the value, you need to buy when it's on the floor. But yeah, it'll we, we, be an interesting thing just to see a little experiment over the next uh, like in a few months. But okay, so we've got to, to, where are we have I think we have one more topic left. I think we've done everything apart from uh, yeah, sure, a random movie recommendation. I had one, I always do this, I have one and then I forget. But um, all right, anyone have a, a random movie recommendation? Uh, right, okay, I'll go for one. Um, I love this one. Nineties movie, The Boondock Saints. Okay, I don't think I've so, seen that actually. Norman Reedus, Willem Dafoe, Billy Connolly. There's actually a couple of sketches on there that you could clip that would make awesome viewing on a YouTube show. There's a Greek gangster on it, and he's got two sayings that's awesome. So, anybody that's not seen. The Boondock Saints, it's two Irish Catholic brothers in Boston looking to wipe out the criminal underworld in the name of God. <laughs> so it is, it's so funny. You have such a bad reputation. It's funny, it's good. Um, yeah, rec- recommend it. It's it's a good, good, good movie. Yeah. Uh, my recommendation would be... Um lock stock and two smoking barrels so if anyone anyone is uh that like have you ever seen that movie uh, uh eddie or jose i've heard of it mm. never seen it. have you seen snatch i've heard of it never seen it That's yeah brilliant. oh my Brad god well, eddie you've snatch. eddie you've never seen snatch oh you'd love man <laughs> snatch that is a bloody no. good movie man it's the same you like it's dags this, you yeah, like yeah. dags Brad, like, thing is, Brad Pitt, growing up, I always thought, like, Brad Pitt's just a pretty boy and that's it. But then I saw Fight Club and I was like, all right, this is, this is all. And then I saw Snatch after it and I was like, this guy's class. Like, when he, when he played, yeah, he plays the gypsy in, a, in, 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 in Snatch. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's really, really good. Well, if I didn't like Fight Club, would I like Snatch? E, I think, I, yeah, I think they're, they're very, very Pete. different style of movies and it, they're kind of like, the, I think even for the accents and stuff like that, like yeah, I think I think you'd appreciate it. And the humor is, I I think you'd love the humor. Do you like Guy Ritchie movies? I love Guy Ritchie movies. Ah, so, then yeah, okay. come on. 
Yeah. 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 Yeah, I wanted um, to um, talk to Ian about that. Actually, I saw his post about the new gentleman shite. show. Yeah, That's I watched the enough. first episode and I thought it was all right, but I haven't right. watched the second episode. Okay, we're, we're, because we're Netflix going... has gone up to twenty-one euro here. We're, we're going off on a tangent. I know a <laughs> lot of people like the the gentleman TV show. I love the gentleman movie. It Same. is absolutely fantastic. There's no typical Guy Ritchie. Tw- I kind of deconstruct his movies like there's like three layers. There's yes. the two layers in st- story, but there's nothing that comes in and, and pulls. And it's like... It's it's almost like he's sold out. I don't like it. I've, Guy Ritchie's up there for me. He's mm-hmm. really up there. Yeah, same. And, yeah, and same. I'm disappointed. In he's the like TV he's almost series. like the um, is is he is is he English? Yeah, and it's like he's like the English Tarantino or something, isn't he? He's kind of but but he uses a lot of his so he's comes from quite a wealthy family, I think. So he's brought up in a kind of I'm not saying he's aristocratic or that, but he uses some of that influence. But then he relates to um, the street vibe and all that stuff, and you see even from. The Sherlock Holmes movie because he's big into kung fu. He, he builds his whole life experiences into his movies, but he is like Tantino, how he, he's got that British version of that. Mm. But this TV series, it's kind of flat. It's okay, but it's flat. Mm. I, I literally just watched the first episode, and from the end of that, it got me into going. Okay, I watch another one, and literally then. As I went to log in, Netflix told me like, "Oh yeah, you need the price have gone up." So like, I think I was paying eleven euro, and now it's like, I can pay eight euro a month for seven twenty p. Uh, no thanks. Ian will never talk to me again. <laughs> or like fifteen euro, an extra four euro for ten eighty p, or then twenty one for four k. Blah blah blah. And I was like, right before New Zealand, no, I, I don't think so. We also have three other streaming services. So I'm like, when is someone just going to just consolidate all this stuff? And half the price, so um, no, I'm not doing it. So I'm, it's no. called a dodgy box. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know, but you know, I, I do like, like, say you're a man who appreciates the the quality and and 4K yeah. or whatever. Like, yeah, is it is it the same? No, and streaming's not even the same. So yeah, I, 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 yeah, I, but I, there's still there's different layers of streaming as well like you know like 720 1080p 4k and oh yeah even on that and even if you're watch some something on 4k if you look at the bit rate difference it's huge it's like comparing a 1080p to a, a pure 4k it really is so but you know mm. i'm a, i'm a physical media guy so mm. this this is a good question like if you think about this that's a great question like because that's Every arguably decade 80s. Has a... 80s. Arguably 80s. 80s. I, I, I don't know, man. I, I think there's a lot of this, like, romanticism, and, and it is a lot of nostalgia as well. And, like, there is no doubt some, like, look, some of my favorite movies come from the 80s. But we do have to give a bit more credit to, like, say, even though they laid the ways in terms of special effects and stuff like that, they've come on so far where, and special effects is not everything. But storytelling and filmmaking, there's, there's kind of like this almost narrative where all the old stuff is better. That's not necessarily all true. Like there is some fantastic media and some fantastic movies still been made. Like so, while I appreciate the '80s, a lot of my favorite movies came from the '80s. '80s is a great decade. Like um, I, I think it's a very difficult question. Like John Campion again, he made a very good point. I was listening to that one episode and pulling out things that he said, but he made a very good point. He said. We're living in a golden era for movies because, say, uh, Denis Villeneuve is making his movies. Nolan's making his movies. Scorsese is still making his movies. Tarantino's making movies. Guy Ritchie is still making movies. Spielberg is still making movies. You know, there are a lot of, like, heavy hitters that are still producing great movies. Like, it's a great time to be alive now, even, like, you know. So, I... Yeah, great movies from the 80s. I accept that, you know. But I, I don't know. Would I go straight for the 80s? I need to sit down and I need to... It's hard. To, the, the get more data. Mo- movies for me, is they, they need to stand the <clears> test <throat> of time, right? So I've got some... 
look at the Wizard of Oz, right? Back in what was that? The early thirties. Uh, see on four, see on four K. You got a movie that's nearly a hundred years old, that's remastered in four K. Unbelievable. That's why you follow Villeneuve and Christopher Nolan and film movies and film, preferably seventy millimeter. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. A letter to to Hollywood. There's okay. There's a all right. Just bear with me now. Okay. 1994 alone, Forrest Gump, The Shawshank Redemption, Pulp Fiction, The Lion King, Leon the Professional, Clerks, Tom and Dumber, Ace Ventura, Pet Detective, The Mass, Natural Born Killers. I'm just reading these out because uh, I remember like something. 1994 was a big, uh, a big year for for movies. But I mean, they're just a few that came out in 1984, and that's when you won the crow. Um, you know that that was just one year in in a decade. So there's a lot of fantastic stuff in the nineties as well. So that's oh, yeah. that's a great question. Yeah. This is great a, like a big shift in tone from the eighties to the nineties. Like eighties had more of a I don't know. It was different, and the nineties switched over to more of like a grungier, and then like the comedies that came out in the nineties are really amazing too like we got friday in the 90s we got a big step in step up for when was um when was uh fuck what's the one jose with uh cuba gooding jr uh um jerry Maguire. jerry no Maguire. no 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 not a comedy with uh ice cube cuba gooding boys in the hood yeah what, that's mm. 90s right? that, that's mean calvin's one of her favorites yeah so like 90s definitely has a lot. I, I guess I say '80s because I'm a big action fan, and I feel like action heroes is better in the '80s, and action movies in general were better in the '80s. I, uh, one thing about the '80s, they weren't afraid to do full gore. Like again, I know we're making the jokes about RoboCop, like, but do you know when you were watching RoboCop, Eddie, when your man like got blown to crap, like, were you a bit like, wow? Yeah, that was insane, dude. That was insane, that was and like. Crazy. Even like the violence say okay, Terminator Two is is the nineties. So I think it was just nineteen ninety one. Can't remember, but I think it was ninety ninety one or nineteen ninety. No, it was ninety. It's definitely nineties. I think it was ninety one. But like, even like the eyeball scene and stuff like that, or like um, uh, when the, the woman who plays Vasquez, who's in Terminator Two as well, puts the blade through a man's mouth. Like that's pretty gory stuff. That mm-hmm. I mean, do we still see stuff like that? We do in certain movies, I suppose, but I don't. I can't recall the last mm. time I saw anything crazy gory. Can, Maybe like can Saul. I, can I? It's like super sorry, crazy. can I pick up on Brad Koski's made a comment there? I grew up in the eighties. Blah blah blah. We just didn't have the effects. We did. So if you look at absolute classic movies that are made on film, like Metropolis, Wizard of Oz. We're going back nearly a hundred years ago. It's when we introduced. What was digital. it like in the olden days, Ian? <laughs> yeah, but I clearly wasn't back in then. But if if I relate it back to the prequels, Star Wars, you can't upscale the digital effects well. But if you look at Oppenheimer or Dune Two. They can they can upscale that to sixteen k no problem because it's on film one seventy millimeter. Wait, it's 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 how it's sixteen k. Yeah, there's a movie that's been upscaled to sixteen k, or it's been trans. Sorry, it's been transferred to sixteen k because it was shot in seventy millimeter. There's a movie, and I can't recall what it was, but I know it's. In fact, I'll find out. That is insane. There's a lot of uh. We've, with the progression of special effects and CGI, we've lost a lot of practical effects, though, that made mu- movies beautiful back in the day, like with uh, Jim Henderson stuff. J- and, Jim Henson, man. Oh, or, yeah, geez. Jim Henson, my bad. Yeah, like, I love Dark Crystal and Fraggle Rock. And Labyrinth. Labyrinth. Fraggle and then, Rock, uh, yeah. Legend is another it's practical a lot of original trilogy of that stuff as well, isn't it? Yeah, original with Stan, Stan Winston, like yeah. the, uh, the Xenomorph. But I think that's the sweet spot where they, 
go, okay, we're not going to do full CGI for everything, but we're also not going to go back and do puppets for everything. That sweet spot where you merge the two techs. You know, what's not even that technology to use in The Mandalorian where it's not necessarily green screen, it's more like a curved video behind and they, ah oh man, there's a, there's a, like a pioneer in technology and believe that Lucasfilm is that, it. that lighting thing? Where yeah, something the, like that where, where it's, it's, it's like, like a bunch of flashing little lights or whatever. Yeah, it's kind of like the volume. Yeah, the volume. The volume is something. The volume stage or something, X-Men Supreme. Right, so that movie's called Samsara. S-A-M-S-A-R-A. Right. Directed by Ron Freak. It was in 2011. And shot in 70mm. Scanned and remastered at 16K resolution. It's the most high resolution movie ever made. And when did you say it was? Uh, 2011. Released? Right, okay. So see, this must be like crystal, like razor sharp then. like. But again, it's like resolution. You need to, to appreciate. You couldn't watch that and appreciate it on a 65 inch TV. This has to be huge, right? So to get that full effect, that's the issue with... I think 4K is the the point where where we're at in terms of uh, a domestic aspect. Yeah, but to, anyway, to mark a tax point, Ian's not American, Shane's not American. Yeah, I don't get that's true. that. I don't, I don't get that point. I I kind of get where I I I kind of get where he's coming from. So like, if you were like watching that, say. <laughs> And if you're watching, say, any 80s movies and you were living in Russia, you'd be like, why are we always the bad guy? <laughs> you know I mean? Yeah, and all, yeah, of, you know. all of those world-ending films is always also, like, the U.S. is the only place at stake. You know, I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think that's just because it's, I suppose, the America, the directors or producers, and but the film studios were, were American, so they get, to, they get to do that. But I never really, like... You know, I, I can recognize this point, um, but I, I never really, it didn't really take from the movie. From, you know what I mean? For me, I just kind of accept, okay, this is American lad, and he's going over here or whatever. Like, so, um, all right, folks, so uh, I'm going to hit the hay. So thanks very much for uh, coming on and giving up your time to uh, to chat about uh all this kind of stuff and thanks very much to people in the chat who've stayed with us if you're watching on the replay we appreciate you too and uh, if you get a second hit the like button hit the subscribe button and anyone else have something they want to plug uh later today we're doing the the movie Over review on on casual nerds we're doing oh, tropic casual. thunder today so should be a funny Good stuff one. are you gonna be on profi chat as well uh, i'm not i'm gonna miss that if i go see dune i'll especially miss that but ah, okay. oh yeah so I'll, i i usually watch our appropriate chat uh the next morning on the um i listen to it on the um the replay so if you're not there i'm assuming you're gonna i'm gonna message you saying what you think you're doing right um no but to all the americans just remember it was scotland that gave you the tv we invented it john logie beard just remember that why does he sound like yogi bear <laughs> we we also get we we also gave you guys penicillin. <clears throat> no, that's not where I thought that was headed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm allergic, so can't take penicillin. We gave you guys Conor McGregor, but you can keep him. We don't want him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got Killian Murphy to balance it out. Yeah, or what did, what did, what did, I, what did I call him? Cillian Cillian Murphy. Um, there was something actually did anyone I, I don't know like I'm not majoring into UFC but like uh, did anyone watch Dustin Poirier's Poirier Dustin Poirier's comeback against the French lad at the weekend uh, it was impressive he's he's an absolute animal man he's, he's I could class. I should start watching the fights because I listen to Joe Rogan a lot and all he mm -hmm. does is talk about fights it makes me real interested but I never I never mm -hmm. actually watch fights so. I, I do I, I do admire like the the amount of training they have to do to kind of uh, to just just their graft and their skill set, and then the nutrition that goes into it, and the physio and the stretch and all that kind of stuff, and then the fact that you're getting into a cage and the door is closing behind you, and I, I admire that kind of like it's skillful, but it's also 
bloody nuts it's brave like it's scary stuff like but then you see some guy who looks like oh he's done he's finished and out of nowhere he just gets the strength bang knocks the guy out it's it's very impressive like but uh i have no interest in ever stepping in front of any of those bloody rings <laughs> it's um my background is i've done martial arts all my life and um full contact kickboxing um my background's in kung fu but I'm an old guy now, I don't do that. I, I used to like the UFC, but it's mm-hmm. a bit of a... And yeah, I'm, I'm not so keen on it. Conor McGregor, early doors, I really liked. I really liked that gritty guy from the street. And then he just became an arsehole. Mm, it's, very hard maybe, to go out. it's very hard to go out and go for a run at five o'clock in the morning when you're wearing silk pyjamas, I think. Did, some, did Tyson say that or someone and, said that? And it was like, you know, because you're... These yeah. Gucci loafers. Yeah. yeah. You guys have any thoughts on Tyson uh, fighting? What was it? Oh, one of the yeah. Paw oh. brothers? So, Tyson's my favorite boxer ever. And I'm really disappointed he's doing this. However, I hope he knocks the shit out of that guy because I've seen, I've, I've seen, I've seen his what, what, training what's, video. What's, what's, what's the, uh, the prize? Is it like the Charizard card or something like Wow! Is it really? Isn't one, but wasn't one of those one of those boys? No, I'm joking. Like, but one of those boys, those yeah, Paul Brothers is a, a YouTuber mm-hmm. and he, he got famous. He, didn't he have like I think Logan really rich and he, 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 he collected and uh, the the Pokemon cards or something. Mm-hmm. Oh, mm-hmm. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. I I just I've I've seen Tyson's training. Well, maybe Tyson wrong. is what about fifty eight, and I saw him. His training video last month. Yeah, he still. There's no he's, way that he's still got it. That it's a real fight, right? No, no. I feel like, like I, if Mike yeah, Tyson I, I, actually yeah. hit See, him, he would yeah. kill him. And and th- this is what's annoying me. It's Tyson sold out big time. Um, yeah. I'm I'm not impressed. Do you ever see? I, I got a laugh though. One of the funniest bits in the that the Hangover was. And Tyson comes in singing the song and just decks <laughs> the, the guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the poor guy hit the floor. I'm not sure he hit a, what was harder, like the box he got from Mike Tyson or um, him him hitting the floor. But like, yeah, he, that that he, he would have killed him. Like, but we're gonna leave it there, folks. I must get that <laughs> clip actually for next week. But uh, guys, we're out of here. Thanks hey, very much uh, for sticking with us. And uh, until next week. Hey, see you, see you next week. Have a nice week, guys. <laughs>